Welcome back, recording people. Allow me to just change the title on Twitch as well. So the next scenario we'll be doing will be scenario 27. It's actually one of my favorite scenarios in the game. I think it's a popular one for a lot of people. Okay. So there we go. All right, so first we need to do a city event and then a road event, and then we can do 27. Really? Uh, man, we are just struggling with reputation. Okay, well, this is going to be fun. Who doesn't like starting scenarios at disadvantages, especially tough ones? All right, so we lose one reputation, and when we start the scenario, we're all going to have to discard two cards. So that's fun. All right, let's have a look-see at scenario 27. So we need to get out a specific tile. M1A. All right, so it's night, then wind. Uh, let's just wait for this to finish. Anything else we need? Just an altar. And that's it. Alright, so we can close that now. Unlock this. Altar goes there. Alright, so sun night. What? Weird. Wind. And we've got frost and sun. And earth and flame, the ordering there is correct. Okay, all good. All right, so let's take a look at the scenario. So it's just this one room. Now oh, we've got hail coming back out again. All the decks of eight cards, I didn't accidentally mess with them. Oop, except this is a boss deck. Uh, I've got to get a sun demon deck again, huh? All right. You see boss special one coming from the sun demon be like what where did that come from right. so protect hail for 10 rounds Oops. what's so fun about this scenario why do i like it because it's a defense scenario i think defense scenarios are naturally fun it's like you get to build your fort and like defend things. It definitely creates tension because it's easy to set up. Well, being easy to set up is a bonus as well, without a doubt. But no, I, I mean it, it. Like you can feel the the time pressure for sure by the end, just like hanging on. I think the the theme of it works really well, as does uh, the mechanics. And like it's just fun. Defense scenarios are almost always the most fun things in RPGs to me, at least. All right, so she's represented by a number token of four plus two times L. So here, this is where we get get dicked. So we didn't get dicked. I mean, we didn't get the better last time, but here we get the worst because L is, even though we're playing with level six monsters, is actually five. So this is 14 health for Hale, which is not a lot. At the end of the first round, one demon spawns on B. At the end of the second round, one demon spawns on C. At the end of each round after the second, two demons will spawn at D and E every odd round and B and C every even at the end of every even round so it'll be bc then de then bc all right the cycle is all right let's make sure that this one isn't incorrect as well now that we've already been appraised of the issues mm, no 
Okay, so night, wind, frost, sun, or flame, the order we have them placed down. All spawns are normal for two characters for... Uh, wait, hold on. Wind, sun, and flame are elite for three characters. So again, this is another example, I think, of a scenario that is poorly tuned for three characters. So quick question to chat, and Themris, you might even still be here. What do you think is the player count which most consistently has poor tuning of scenarios? I actually still think it's two because I think it goes both ways at two more often. But three also gets stick to fair amount. I mean, four definitely, like, the game is definitely balanced the most around four. There's no doubt about that. So the, the real question is whether it's two or three, which has the most imbalance in terms of scenario designs. But I mean, here, part of the issue with this is it's just the stupidity of Elite Wind Demons, like level four plus Elite Wind Demons. <sighs> this is honestly an unpleasant design. And so like putting this in here, it's so like, <sighs> I don't even know. Having every other be elite and regular, but having the thing that disarms when it's elite be in the scenario for three players is really is really something. All right, so there will be a knight and then a win. So the wind is elite, so we basically have to chain CC it while we kill it, because otherwise it will chain CC us, which is really fun. Uh, so we probably want avalanche, because we want to create a lot of obstacles here, even if it's just for one turn. This is also good. We don't actually need much movement at all, so we can kind of cut movement cards. We could even set up backup ammo in the beginning. Although backup ammo is not very good here. It's not good in the beginning. And then later on we won't have time to set it up. We definitely don't have time. Well, we, actually healing is kind of useful. But I'm not sure we want that much of it. Crater is probably fine. I mean, these are all fine. Certainly. Explosive punch isn't that necessary. But the initiative is also just okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I definitely want this bottom, and I think we definitely want Avalanche. I'm cutting these two cards, I think, is reasonable. And a bottom heal is just better here because we don't need to move much. It was AFK. No, we lost. We won. We we were able to stack a crit on the top of the Krygarts deck using the Diviner, and then do it with Blunt Force to do 16 in turn. And we got really lucky with the the first the turn we entered the room. The boss. Did, did not have the altar jump. So basically, if the altar jumped the first turn, it would have been a lot harder because we wouldn't have been able to kill it before it entered a new room. I mean, like, before it entered the third room, basically. But because it didn't jump the first time and then the stacking of crit to make an attack 16, stuff like that, we were just just able to kill it right before it was actually jumping that very turn into the next room. So yeah, it worked out all right. So Themers, I was actually asking a question. Which player count do you think is, the mo is most consistently imbalanced? So I, I was talking about that because of here. Because this scenario, I think that three players is the most imbalanced in, in a negative way. So you think it is two? So that's what I was wondering as well. I also think it probably is two as well. Because two goes actually both directions. I think a lot of times two has a lot of bad scenarios and also has a fair number of scenarios which are a bit too easy in two. So I think two is like the least consistent. But I wonder if two or three is the most consistently difficult, like made more difficult with imbalance. So this one, for example, I think is definitely a three because, uh, again, just because the exist the, the fact that you have elite wind demons here at three and you don't have them at two, and then you, like, so three or four both have elite except four you have one more character. Having everything elite isn't the same as having, you know, elite wind demons specifically. Yeah, I think this is an exception. I also think that part of the issue, like, it, it seems to me that there are so many issues in the game that are tied to the design of Elite Wind Demons. It seems like it would have been so much better to just not design Elite Wind Demons, this, Elite Wind Demons this way. I mean, like, you could have made them scary by giving them, like, I don't know, like, Target 2 or something like that. I mean, this is still really scary, but this is just, like, first of all, every, anytime you put them in a two-player scenario, it's a nightmare. I mean, it, it creates a nightmare in terms of balance between, like, level 3 and level 4. Like, the most enormous possible difficulty spike when you're playing in a, like, a low part low party size and go from 3 to 4. Like, everything spikes a bit from 3 to 4, but Wind Demon's, like, pff, I don't know. Anyway, 
Um, so the Mind Thief. What about Mass Hysteria here? Yeah, Mass Hysteria is actually probably fine here. Invis can also be useful. Kind of. A lot of things fly here. So it's more of a maybe. This can also be good because we can make things attack into other things and get retaliated. What things are not good here? Some juicy previews in M20. Yeah. Yeah, it looks all right. I'm kind of eh on the magic these days. I mean, not for any particular reason. I just you know, haven't really had the time and stuff like that. I mean, it, admittedly, I think... So Modern Horizons was actually pretty interesting in terms of a set overall. But Hogak? Ho Hogak? I mean, come on. Like, I hadn't actually really looked through it, but now, like, I, I heard something about it, and then I, I read the card, and then I read, like, already the impact it's having, and the fact that it's, I mean, inevitably going to get banned in, like, a week. Like, how... Cards, like... I mean, how could you honestly think that this card is reasonable? Yeah. All right, anyway... Are there cards here that we can cut? Yeah, it is really Time Spiral 2.0. You're not kidding. Although I personally love Time Spiral, whereas Modern Horizons I'm more hit or miss on. I will we definitely... But if we... I mean, the purpose of having Mass Hysteria for bottom is to actually set up Sound Scream. I think Fearsome Blades is not necessary, although it's nice to avoid the Retaliates. Yeah, but we can probably cut that. So do we just bring in this? We don't get to bring in any of these other cards? I mean, all these other cards are really good for us. Oh, yeah. I, I agree with you, Thermos, completely. I enjoyed... First of all, of the three, I like Time Spiral. Um... Oh, we're talking about Magic the Gathering just a little bit. I like Time Spiral the most of the three by a significant margin. I like this was one of my top five draft sets for sure. Like the the block, I would say that Time Spiral, Time Spiral, Time Spiral was my favorite by a significant margin over Time Spiral, Planar Chaos, Future Sight. Future Sight also introduced Sprout Swarm, which like if we're talking about design mistakes, come on. <laughs> They're like, man, green has been the worst class or worst color in uh, limited for so long. We're gonna make green good by making one really stupid card. Like yeah, obviously there were some ways to play around it, but. But, yeah, I mean, yeah, like, Future Sight was fine, but Time Spiral, I think, was definitely by far the best, and Planner Chaos was definitely the worst. And then Future Sight was also, again, tarnished by the existence of Sprout Swarm. Because, again, come on. Let's be real. The card is so dumb. So very dumb. And, I mean, I won my fair share of games with, with Sprout Swarm, without a doubt. And I sighted in the the blue-blue X um, delve counter a fair number of times to beat Sprout Swarm, but... That's not to say that it was a good design. Logic Knot, I think that's the name of it. Anyway. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think going to Augments here is fine. It's a 10-round scenario, so we have the time. Getting two healing per turn is quite good. And I don't think any of these... Other, I mean, like, I would like to have this and this, but... All right, I've got to look at this quickly. I can't get too distracted here with Emrys, but I'll, I'll indulge a, a quick link. Oh, Design Fail 101. What is this? Oh, yeah, you're linking me Harmonize? Yeah, yeah, I know Harmonize. I love Harmonize. I draft it in cube all the time. But yes, I agree. I agree. Um, yeah, it doesn't seem like there's really anything else we can cut, to be honest. I mean, we could just cut this. How much? How useful is Late Initiative? I mean, we've got an Invis Cloak, so theoretically it is useful. Yeah, you can try MTG for free these days with arena i mean i don't really like arena very much primarily because i'm a limited player and drafting against bots is just dumb but the positive is it does make it easier than ever for new people to try magic so i mean yeah exactly the barrier is non-existent just as summer said yeah i don't think there are any other of these cards that i want to cut the only one i could potentially cut is this this doesn't serve a big fun purpose because I don't need the movement, but the big thing that it does do is let me go late after going invis. And like putting an invis, but then cutting my late, it's not really a net positive, I think. So yeah, I think we'll just go like this. All right. 
So Craggy we've already changed as well. Diviner, oh yeah, we can definitely go back to... So CC is really good. Wait. <laughs> we, we can invis hail. <laughs> oh, that's great. That is great. Wait, hold on. It doesn't say that she's not an ally to us, right? Yeah, she's an ally to an enemy. Yeah, all right. I mean, like, it's not that amazing, because we can still all get killed with Hail and Viz, but that's still a great emergency weapon. I mean, like, in case of emergency, press this button. All right, we don't want this anymore, nor do we really care about this. So we put these two cards in. We put one other card in there, didn't we? Yeah, we put this in. Yeah, I probably don't need that either. Stall tactic. Yeah, it, it is. A, I mean, it's definitely a good stall tactic, without a doubt. Like, it's not like we can just cheese the scenario by this, but if we get towards the end and we're, like, in trouble, we can easily just invis hail and, like, hide in a corner or something. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of a two-round stall tactic. It's also true that... Wait a second. Wait. All right. So we got to bring this back, right? No, because it doesn't matter, because we can just keep our cloak. Yeah, we, we can literally get... One round. Yeah, only one round, unfortunately. So, technically we can get a little bit... We can actually get two rounds, though. We can actually... We can do two rounds. Right, but what we can do... So, we'll, like... Both of us pop our invis cloaks, and we use the invis stun on hail. Okay. Hail loses the invis. We short rest with the diviner, go early, invis hail again, while the mind thief stays invis with the cloak going late. This, I mean, or long resting, you know, whatever. This allows us to then skip not only the first turn where we go early and, and get a three invis, and then the following turn, like the diviner dies. So this allows us to bail out at the end. Why do you think it's a bit of a trap? I mean, anyway, we're bringing that card regardless, so. Our rifts should also be really good here. Spending a lot of actions on not dealing with the enemy. Oh, no, but I mean, the point is, like, to do this on rounds 9 and 10. The scenario is 10 rounds. I mean, being able to skip the last fifth of the scenario, which is also the most difficult part, that's still really, really good. I don't think this is a trap at all. It's not like I'm planning on doing this in the beginning. Obviously, I'm going to deal with the enemies as long as I can, but at some point, you always get overwhelmed with the enemies. That's just inevitable in this scenario. All right. So we've already done City and Road event. Um, we need our battle goals, and we have to remember to discard two cards. Which is kind of annoying. All right. For the Diviner. Well, we can literally never do this. Which is something else. Use your equip items number of two times. So we're level five, so we'd have to use our items seven times total. I guess that's probably doable, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, easily. All right. Mm -hmm. Take only short rest during the scenario. Loot a treasure tile. Well, there's literally not a treasure tile, so we'll try to take only short rests. That's also doable. And here, kill five or more monsters or have five or more total cards in hand. Ugh, man, I really want to check. I'm going to play Mass Hysteria, so it's not very likely that I, I have five or more cards in the end. Especially because of the possibility of losing cards to negate damage. So we'll try to kill five or more monsters. Try to help us count if you can, chat. Alright, so we've got a Night Demon spawning down here. Let's start getting ready, shall we? I guess I should have backup ammo and just set it up. Yeah, I think I actually do want it, because I can just set it up here and not use range attacks for, like, two turns, and that's fine. Because I don't really have anything else to do here. So what is one more card that we could cut? Could just cut Crater. Then we only have this to proc up backup ammo, so that doesn't really make a lot of sense. Honestly, we can just cut Explosive Punch. We've got a, um, what, 29, 21, 13, 19. Yeah, we're fine for initiatives. We don't need Explosive Punch that badly here. All right. So, let's take a look at the spawning order again. So, it's going to be Night Demon, then Wind Demon, then Frost Sun, 
frost, sun, earth, fire, night, wind. So this is definitely up. Up here, there's a lot of melee. Because we've got to figure out where the melee is coming from. So this makes sense. Oh, but now it's actually annoying to move enough to hit, right? If we go like here. None of these really work. Because the night demon is going to be here. We want to be able to go attack it. Oh, but we actually get one additional movement from our... Yeah, yeah, this works. This works. So you can place rock here and here. I think it's still better to place them here for now. This allows us to stay on the inside. Yeah. So then we can do move two to here. So the mind thief just has to move before us, but that's typically not too difficult to do. Okay. So, as there are no enemies here this turn, we're just going to do some setup. So we're going to set up the bottom of mass hysteria. Like I said, we are going to use mass hysteria bottom for this. And we're going to set up the top of mind's weakness. Um, so, did we have any cards? Were there like any persistent losses or losses we could play at the beginning? Yeah, this is just not worth it. No, yeah, that's so bad. Nope. So we have... Don't have any real ways of spending additional longevity to get an advantage here. Doing all these losses is just complete nonsense as well. So what do we do this turn? Mess with some decks. I guess. I don't really have anything else better to do. So, yeah, let's just do that. Mess with some decks, mess with some decks. Kind of makes me wish I had the three, but that's okay. Althamaris, if you're still here, by the way, I have been thoroughly unimpressed with Call of the Nether. Again, the bottom has not once ever been usable. It's, it's actually, like, I didn't think it would be very good. It's been worse than I thought it would be. The top has been average mediocre even like it has some kind of good cases but for the most part it's really not been very good the problem is i mean so we have seven perks now to be clear one two three four five six seven oh we huh. we almost forgot to remove those minus ones from our deck well yeah the bottom is more than extremely situational it is just I mean, all right, extremely situational, I guess, is the best way to put it. And the top has just not been very good. The thing is, like, even now with seven modifier decks, the question is, are you consistently hitting two plus targets with a curse? No. I would say that I'm, on average, hitting slightly... I mean, well, the thing is, I, I don't even get to play it all the time, right? But on average, I'm, I would say I'm hitting around two targets, maybe even very slightly under, or theoretically am hitting. I mean, like, because I just don't play it when I can only hit one target. My average modifier draw is not bad. Uh, well, the problem is we still have a lot of zeros in our deck. So we still have, what, five zeros? So we've got five zeros, no minus ones, no minus twos. And then we've got, for positives, we've got one plus one, one plus one heal two, and one plus two curse, and then two rolling curse modifiers. So our, the thing is, I mean, like, all right, I, I already said this when you weren't here, but I'm just saying it to you now. But a good deal of added curses in the heal. Yeah, except we just don't flip the added curses. I mean, like, our deck is still quite large. We still have a 20-card deck, right? I mean, technically, two of those are rolling modifiers. So that's still 18 results. With only two rolling curses and one curse modifier, that's that's still only... I mean, assuming 18 results, that's still, like, one out of five. So even hitting two targets, you're still not getting one single curse with that most of the time. It's not very good. Like I said... I think if you start as a lineage of having, like, 10 perks, maybe this top is fine. It's also that, like, even if we get a plus one, I mean, look at the hells of the enemies we're against. 1421, shield, so just literally zero damage. Minimum 1222, shield, so zero damage. 2027, shield, so zero damage. Like, it's just never doing any damage to any of these enemies. Even when we flip plus ones, like, oh, we got one damage on an enemy with 20 health. Like, pfft. Uh, the alternative was the card that I really wanted. Because the deck stacking has been amazing, actually. Um, envision the course. Reveal the top four cards of any attack modifier deck, then place them back in any order. I wish I had more abilities like this. And so it's basically stack two decks for four cards. I mean, like I said, I, I, I suspected that Envision was better. I took Nether to confirm my suspicions and to play with Nether so that I could see what it play, how to play it. And having played with Nether 
not for an enormous amount of time now. Yeah, you you. But the level, but this replace. I mean, so first of all, we're not using one of the level one options right now, and the other level one option has a really good bottom. Where is it? Oh, yeah. This, which we also want to use a lot. No, I, w I wouldn't rather use three. I'd rather replace the others with this. You understand? This is just much more efficient than those. Like, first of all, this allows me to use this bottom and then use that top. Oh, you can hear that outside? Yeah, sorry, my window has to be open. You c I can use this bottom and still use that top, which then gives me two curses on a bottom action rather than having to use the top action for it. Which, again, all this top action is doing most of the time is zero damage and two curses. Like, that's like my average reasonable expectation, right? Because, again, plus one is nothing. Yeah, but this creates dark and this creates dark. They both create dark. So that's my point. So, like, this is just, like, this is basically just as good as doing this, only, again, it, it's just a bottom, which is so much better than a top. And, like, then I could have this and that one. I wouldn't keep this one. But this is just also much, much, much better than this one, and it can use either element. I'm, sh like, like I said, I, I suspected this was better. I'm, like, 98% sure that this was better now. Again, that seems like shaky logic as they aren't mutually exclusive. Using, but the thing... Oh, having two instances of Curse 2 is good. Correct, but the point is that a Curse... Like, two-target Curse as a top action is not good. Two-target Curse as a bottom action is good. The issue is the action efficiency on which half of the card that it's on. Like, to me, thus far... This, by being a bottom action, has been better than this because it is a top action, even though this is a better action than this action. Furthermore, this is a much better action than this is. So the issue for me is that, like, honestly, this, also this has better initiative than this does. This has just been consistently a better card than this has, and this is a level one card and this is a level three card. Now, the question is, yes, you can have both of them together. Stacking that many curses in the enemy deck hasn't been that useful. The reality of the situation is when playing against enemies that are plus three levels higher than your characters, with especially without a real tank, you just can't take that many attacks. And the level three does scale better than Envision? Oh, it scales better than this? Yeah, I guess. Doesn't I think scale better than Envision? I think Envision scales very well. Uh, so this isn't actually true. Like, we kind of had this discussion before, but in fact, now that I've got this deck this like super tight deck from the mind thief. Why is it 14 cards? Is there something in there that's not supposed to be? Is this supposed to be 12? No, I guess it's correct. Now that we've gotten the mind thief stack down to super tight, every time I get to stack the mind thief deck, it is extremely valuable because I have a high probability of finding crit and a high probability of finding plus twos. And like not just that I it's not like making them better. It's that not only do I get to like make the deck sometimes better, but more than anything, I get to know what I have for a modifier. And knowing you have a plus two or a crit is like an enormous difference, especially on a class like a Mind Thief, for example, who can make an attack one or can make an attack six or an attack eight even. Like wh knowing when you have the crit, knowing when you have the plus two changes everything in your ability to correctly plan your attacks. And like I said, the, the biggest thing to me is like, I don't have a party that allows curses, like having st spending that many actions to stack so many curses to be good because I can't allow enemies to attack that much. They're also playing with perfect... I mean, what do you mean? I'm playing with perfect information for my allies, but that doesn't really change anything. Allowing my ally to stack their deck would still just allow them to make the correct decisions. Normal party, the stacking is still really good, but isn't as perfectly coordinated. Well, I suppose it depends on your... I mean, I guess... You s hmm. You say normal party, but this is a little bit unfair. You can say average party. For example, like when I play solo or when I play with Jessica, I don't feel any different. I mean, again, Jessica and I play in a two-player party and have played like 120 scenarios together, right? So if I play with her or I play solo, there's no difference in level of coordination whatsoever. We know all each other's classes. We know which cards and we know which initiatives. Like, they're... Like, there's no difference. So, like, an average party early in a campaign, sure, but you've also got to consider that most people who are going to be playing with the Diviner have been playing for a while. And obviously, like, the level of coordination does improve significantly over time. Yeah, but, but so you said, that's that's why I'm saying you should say an average party, not a normal party. Saying a normal party, like, what's normal? I think that's a little bit unfair to say a normal party. Like, so Jessica and I aren't normal? You can say we're not average, but saying we're not normal is like, hmm. 
kind of implying something that's unnecessary, I think. All right, so first turn we have no enemies to fight, so we're just going to do some setup. So we're going to activate the bottom of Mass Hysteria. Why doesn't this give experience? I mean, at the same time, the Mind Thief doesn't deserve experience, but having a loss which doesn't give any experience feels really weird. I guess it's because, like, yeah, the Augments are going to give you experience, but the fact that you play two Augments and try to keep them up is actually going to lead to less experience. It's really weird that this doesn't give any experience. All right, so we activate this, and we gain one experience, and we activate the Mind's Weakness. All right, Cracker activates this. So our next four range attacks, we can add target. And then we use the bottom of Avalanche, creating Earth, and dropping some rocks. In preparation for what is to come. Oops. Actually, I think I'll do it like this and this, because this way when I rock slide, I can put one there to deal damage. That's probably better. Actually, in that case, I should even go like this, so I don't deal damage to hail when I place one in the future. Although, I don't want to block off up here. I think I... So, hold on. Where is it again? So, wind, frost, sun, earth, flame, night, wind, frost, sun, earth, flame. Ugh. So, here and here, it's always flying, so it doesn't really change anything. So, the most important thing is just blocking off up here. So, I mean, it's probably like creating a hook sort of thing like this. So I guess we'll always be placing like one, one here, here. Yeah, so we should still place here then. Okay. And we go reveal a top card of any non-boss monster ability card deck. Mm -hmm. Do I want this so soon? Is it really going to change anything about what I do? What am I going to do this coming turn? Yeah, I guess I'd like to see this, because then I can decide if I'm going to like immobilize him or something. All right, so he's doing a range attack. Ugh, well, that's good to know, at least. It's a 26 initiative range attack for this one. And then we use the top here, and we get to look at two cards and put up to one on the bottom. <sighs> no, we'll keep both those. <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. It's not going to matter. We're going to end up flipping both of them, but this is still fine. All right, end of the round. So we get a regular Night Demon. So we want to stun you before 26 initiative, huh? All right, that's fine. The, that allows us to just take the opportunity to set up Silent Scream, and we'll just use Perverse Edge to stun it. Okay, so then, oh, but that means we're not moving, which is making things more annoying for the Cragheart, because the Cragheart needs to make a melee attack. I understand not liking it from a design standpoint, but mechanically, the, des the deck manipulation stuff is amazing. I can understand your argument that it just, like, adds a lot of uh, extra unnecessary time. Um, so we need to move a bit more then, which is annoying. Since the Mighty's not moving, yeah, it creates an issue. This creates an issue because now we don't actually have anything we really want to do here. We could just move with massive boulder here. I find it very fun, but I mean, I guess it, it it's not fun to you. Yeah, I mean, you can understand that I would obviously stand on the opposite end of the spectrum from you on that one. But so, first of all, I appreciate it again, because as you know, I prefer to avoid luck. Um, <laughs> exactly. And, yeah, but you mean, you understand, that's why we like playing blue. It's because I don't like luck to decide my games. I don't like to play, like, a green deck where the outcome of the the match is determined by my opening hand. 
I'd rather, you know, have a chance to win at any point in the game. Obviously, I'm, I'm making a bit of a joke, but still. Anyway, to me, though, this is fun not just because it eliminates randomness, but it also is fun because it, it generates value. Like, having an action which generates value out of combat feels really good, which sometimes is healing. Anytime you heal someone outside of combat, it feels pretty good, right? Like, you're gaining something which you're going to have in the future, which you otherwise wouldn't have. But healing it, like can't be the only form of supporting. So the issue is, like... Supports need to do things other than attacking, so supports thus far in Gloomhaven can do healing, which is generally bad, which is why the Tinker is bad, and they can do CCing, which is good, which is why like the support class, which is based around having all the CC in the world, is too good. So here, this gives you like a way of being a support and generating value for the party, which feels satisfying as the player who does it, and the player who it's done for, um, without being broken, I think. But yeah, I understand. I do understand. Alright, so... Yeah, we're really in this annoying spot. I mean, otherwise we just use the boots of striding. Maybe just using the boots of striding is fine. So then we blunt force up. Because we need to use a melee attack here. We don't want to use a ranged attack because a ranged attack um, will waste a back of ammo charge. Yeah, we might as well strengthen ourselves. Just use boots of striding, so be it. it. Sucks a little bit, but it's okay. I mean, I don't want Gloomhaven to be too much like a puzzle, so I agree with you in this regard. But it kind of depends. We could actually stun and viz this thing. Then we don't need to do this. Then we can actually... That actually fixes all of our problems. Then we don't need to stun it ourselves this turn. We can still set up this, though. Instead, And we can negate the disadvantage this way, too. Ooh, yeah. Oh, that that's nice. Oh, stun and viz. I love you. So we'll actually just play this... And play this. That's beautiful, actually. All right, so they're stun. Before it goes, then it goes. So no, we need to go after it. Yeah, because it's going to be invisible otherwise. Ooh. All right, so that creates a bit of an issue. So we can actually just attack with heaving swing because we need to make a melee attack. Otherwise, we can just not advantage ourselves. But I think getting two turns of advantage would be good. At the same time, I probably want to use Rock Slide next. No, I guess I'll wait one more turn to use Rock Slide. Yeah, so this makes sense. Because then we'll have two turns of attacking. Yeah, I understand where you're coming from completely. All right, so we're up first. We have, well, we can just begin by using the top of Dimensional Transfer. We gain one experience, create dark, and we stun and invis the Night Demon. And we'll taste of its own medicine. And then we have the bottom of Clairvoyance as a default move, too. So where do we want to be next turn? That's the question here. So we're going to have a f oh, Wind Demon spawning up at the top. We really need to CC it. 21 actually works well. Hmm. Hmm. I think actually where we are is fine. We can disarm both things from here. We place that rift here, pull into that, right? Yeah, yeah, this works. All right. Night Demon go. Oh, but regardless, we're going to default this back with an Endurance Potion charge here. Oh, crap. We didn't reset this properly. So we're on round two right now. This doesn't matter for the scenario. So Night Demon goes, loses the stun and invis. Then we go on the Cracker. <gasps> I'm an idiot. We didn't have the one extra movement here. <laughs> oh, but the Mind Thief didn't move, so it didn't actually work anyway. Because we need the Mind Thief to move before us. All right, whatever. We have to use our boots. That's fine. So one, two, three. I think here is fine. We gain one experience. We get strengthened. And then we attack with Heaving Swing, not using the push, so just making an attack 3. Neither advantage nor disadvantage, plus 1, so 4 damage. Sure. Down to 10. Okay. So then the Mind Thief goes. We use the bottom of Empathetic Assault. Also strengthen ourselves. Take that, you disadvantage. So. And then we're going to activate the top of Silent Scream. So we gain 1 experience. And we get an attack 4 with the heal 2 range 2. And the heal 2 not doing anything, but that's okay. So we get an attack 4, targeting the 
Night Demon, we have neither advantage nor disadvantage because we have Strengthen, so we get plus two. So from four, we get six, putting us down to four, and create ice, which is really nice. And that was not an intentional pun. Okay, so that's that. So then we get a, an Elite Frost Demon. So this thing is like, fire everything. All right. So you have four life left, and we're strengthened. So normally the Crackheart should be able to kill you. This allows the Mind Thief to go deal with the Wind Demon. One, two, three. We need at least four movement. But that initiative is also just really good, since we need to attack with this, because we definitely want to stun it so it doesn't disarm anyone. I could try to go late, because it's actually going to attack Hale. And if I attack from there, I actually get a free heal on Hale, but it's just too risky. It does multi-target. Stupid elite wind demons. Such a dumb thing. Such a dumb thing. Um, I think I'm actually just going to play this bottom, then. In case I get one less, somehow get a minus... Actually, I don't have minus ones in my deck, so actually I can't get a minus one. I can get a minus two, but then this doesn't change anything. So I don't need to do that. So what do I want to do? So next turn, we'll have... Frost and Sun, which come out. The annoying thing is there's no easy spot for me to attack the two range things from, but I guess if we pull one in, that could potentially happen. So Sun will be down here, so I guess we kind of just need to move a little bit so that we can do a range attack on both. So we probably keep our two good range attacks. We want to keep Rock Slide. Yeah, I guess we don't need Earth and Cloud anytime soon. All right. So what is the Diviner up to then? Huh. I mean, I guess we're doing our Rift combo. Just makes sense. It's not actually so necessary, though. Because... So what if we do this Rift, com Oops, this Rift combo instead? We don't necessarily need the Disarm Rifts right now. But I wouldn't mind getting a Wound Rift on that, since it's going to be stunned anyway. Seems pretty good. And I'm pulling it, because pulling it will make it easier to get um, to have the Krakart hit it and the Sun Demon next turn. Because we want the Krakart to be able to hit that, because we're going to be using our Piercing Bow to hit both. Again, we're kind of trying to spend as much as possible, as early as possible, to get as, as far ahead as possible, so we don't get like start falling behind against the number of enemies. So it makes sense to move it, and we might as well wound it, because we don't really need to disarm it, since we're getting a stun on it anyway. And the disarm is unlikely to go after. I guess if we win at 30, we would have a decent chance of going after. Actually, yeah. Maybe that is better than, than just applying a wound to it. It sucks if we end up going before it, though, but we're most likely going after it here. All right, here we go. So yeah, let's give this a try. I think this is fine. Ah, but the point is we don't need the other Disarm Rift this turn. But this also allows us to Disarm it for next turn. The Mind Thief can also just stun it next turn, though, because we have Perverse Edge. So I think this is... No, so it's fine to wound it. The wound is going to be really valuable on it as well. And by going at 21, there's a decent chance we get the wound before it goes. All right, here it goes. Nine. Nice try. Nice try. Ooh, four. Okay, fair enough. Well, we're going to take a little bit of damage, but we get, that's what we got our healing for. So the Night Demon is going to create dark and attack at minus one. So four on the Mind Thief, because the Mind Thief is earlier initiative. Six. Okay, fair enough. That hurts. Like I said, we've got a lot of healing coming, so we'll be okay. All right, so then we use the bottom of Cranium Overload as a move five. One, two, three, four five to here because this puts us closer to attack the next thing as well potentially although at the same time if we're going to pull this where do we want to pull it to can we i actually have a question can we <coughs> oops can we pull a flying enemy through an ally i think maybe uh this includes force movement like push or pull. Yep. So we can pull a flying ally through a flying enemy through an ally. I hate Marcel. So yeah, being here is actually good because then if we put this, oh no, but then it's not close. Oh yeah, but no, that works. Oh, the cracker has to go to here. Oh, we didn't play the right moves then. Ah, uh, that still works because we can move early next turn. Yeah, we can make it work. So yeah, pulling that to there is good. Okay. So we go to there. And then we use the top of Frigid Apparition, consuming the ice, gaining one experience. We get to make an attack five. We will consume, or sorry, with advantage. 
Right. Well, sucks to see the plus two there. So five plus two is seven. This thing has three shields, so it takes four damage. Down to eight. It's okay. Sorry, I haven't been back on Discord since. Um, and then we get heal two from Silent Scream. You missed uh, the previous scenario. The diviner, the diviner's deck stacking carried us through a boss fight with an otherwise not excellent boss fight party on a, a plus three boss fight this early in the campaign. It's not easy either. It was not an easy scenario, but being able to stack the the crit on the top of the Kragart's deck and then being able to time that with blunt force for an attack uh, sixteen was pretty good. All right. Um, do we have anything else we want to use here? No, I don't think so. No reason to use the healing potion or anything like that. Alright, so the Wind Demon goes, loses the stun. So then the Krykark goes. So we're going to begin by just attacking... I guess, yeah, no, oh no, we can't move one in any meaningful way. We're going to make an attack four with Kinetic Assault. Neither advantage nor disadvantage. Alright, so that's down. No coins ever in this scenario, unfortunately. And then we're going to use the bottom of Earth and Cloud as a default move to, I guess, going to here. This, no, going to here works. Because we this way we can use Rock Slide as well. Yeah, potentially. So then we're done. So then the Diviner goes. So we're going to begin by placing a hex on any unoccupied hex within range 5. Placing a hex, or hex, uh, rift there. A rift on any hex with range 5, and any enemy that enters a rift this turn gets wounded and mobilized. And then we're going to place another rift here. Yeah, this makes sense, because then the sun demon, next turn we can disarm theoretically. And we can place like one here as well. Yeah, that's beautiful. Beautiful. All right. So then... Sorry, so the first one we placed up there, and then secondly, we use the bottom of this to place a Rift Token in any unoccupied hex within range 3, and then we do pull 2, target one enemy within range 3 of any Rift Token, and pull them toward that Rift Token. So we pull this to there, which puts Wound and Immobilize on it, which is beautiful. Okay, so now, oh, we got to do the spawns. We have a regular Frost Demon and an Elite Sun Demon. So 18 health on you and 12 health on you. Ah, good call. Uh, that's far no kills on the Mind Thief, but thank you. Thank you for reminding me. Us only short rests. Us number of times we use items. We've got one item used thus far. Okay. You gotta remember to track all these things. Um, okay, so it's got to be Rock Slide this turn, I think. Makes just the most sense. Allows us to close this off. Mind Thief takes a bit of damage, but that's okay. Mind Thief, like I said, has plenty of self-healing here. Gives us really nice direct damage. Direct damage down here as well. Yep. And the best initiative, we're an Endurance pushing it back. So definitely a Disarm Rift here. And what for a bottom? And no matter what, the bottom is just for initiative. So in that case, I guess we can just use this card. Because we don't have any any bottoms that really do anything else here. We have dark. I guess we could use this. But now the initiative sucks at 30. This doesn't work to make sure we get the disarm here. And swapping this into where we are isn't really something we want to do anyway. Okay. So what does the Mind Thief do here then? I guess stunning the Wind Demon is good. Certainly. And we didn't make ice, did we? No. So I'd like to keep this for a bottom. So I guess I'll just attack with this as a top here, and then I can do it like these two next the following turn. Okay. Here goes. Good. He's doing it's doing melee, which is really important. This also fine. Yeah, overall pretty good. Pretty good. Okay, so it is the Mind Thief who's up first. We're going to begin by using the top of Hostile Takeover as a default. So we don't have either of these anymore. As a default, attack four, targeting the elite. Running to launch Sea of Emerus. 
targeting elite uh wind demon yeah okay so five that's two damage every bit of damage counts this thing is like i said by far the highest priority and then we use the bottom first edge gain one experience and create ice and make an attack one range three uh, stun targeting the elite wind demon with disadvantage and the disadvantage not really mattering eh, i mean it sucks to lose the plus two but that was not the important part all right have to prevent that stupid thing from attacking ever so then we go on the diviner so where do we want to place this rift so we have some options so we're placing a rock here we don't have to oh sorry and the mind thief also heals for two because we have silence scream yep. it's only on melee attacks yes um, so we don't have to place a rock here this turn. We could actually place the rift here. And this would be disarmed here for two turns. It's not, well, I mean, well, for one turn, but one more turn. And this would just avoid two damage to the mind thief. Then we could do like rock here, rock here, rock here. And try to just block this section off completely with the rock wall, eventually like closing this in with one of these. Yeah, that works, I think. All right. So then we don't want to move. We want to stay where we are. What are we doing next turn? We're doing some shielding. Yeah, so where we are is fine because this will be disarmed again. We'll shield our allies. Oh yeah, you're right. It, it. We don't even have to place one there. Yeah, I forgot about that. I just missed it because the wind demon's hiding it. Good call. So we don't even have to place one there. So the, but we can still place one kind of wherever we want. But I guess the point is we don't really need one up here. If we're gonna block this. Like, we can do this, 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 like you said. So we can just set up another rift for the future on the other side. So where will we eventually care? Like, all down here is going to be good because our rock wall is going to... But, I mean, we can even extend the rock wall to theoretically here. I guess this is just the best spot to have another rift, regardless. Because things dr run directly in from there as well. All right, so we'll place the rift there. And any enemies that enter a rift this turn get disarmed using the top of Void Snare. And then we use the bottom of Clairvoyance simply as a default move two. And is there an advantage to going to here? No, I don't really think there is. So we'll just stay there. Okay. So then the Krakark goes. So we're going to use the top of Rock Slide, gain one experience, create Earth. Man, honestly, like I love this scenario to begin with, but playing this scenario with the Krakark and the Diviner is just like, this is so much fun. It's, it's actually tower defense. All right. So we place a rock there. Place a rock here. And so we can place it here or here. Doesn't really change much, I think. I guess this one is more useful because then we can theoretically knock from either side into it with healing swing. So sure, let's do it there. All right. So that's two damage to you, down to four. Two damage to you, down to ten. And two damage to you, down to sixteen. Re respectable amount of damage. And then we have the bottom of unstable upheavals default move two again. So I'm going to move to here because this allows me to attack both sides with a uh, ranged attack, which is exactly what I want to do. And I'm going to, yeah, I've got two turns of good ranged attack. So yeah, I will endurance potion back uh, and save up evil after moving with it. Okay, Frost Demon goes, moves to here and gets disarmed for two rounds. Beautiful. Night Demon was eliminated. I shouldn't actually have flipped for you, my bad. Let me shuffle that in. Wind Demon goes. Loses the stun and immobilize. Takes one damage from wound. Now to three. Sun demon goes. Moves here. Does create sun. Not too threatening because it's disarmed for two rounds as well. Okay, end of the round. So more spawns. All right. Interesting. It's definitely not bad. Um. So what is our plan here? To use massive boulder, hitting like these two things, using piercing bow. So. I 
damage, that's fine. It's going to do 2 damage to the Mind Thief, unless the Mind Thief runs away first, but the Mind Thief can run away first. We can even potentially hit this and this. Then we don't even need Piercing Bow this turn if we hit this. Hmm. Well, I mean, it, it only gives, I mean, a minor endurance potion only gives you one more turn than a stamina potion does while having like an enormous, I mean, like this scenario would be significantly easier if I had stamina potions because I would have been able to play rock slide back to back and the disarm rift back to back. It's still so much better than getting an extra turn. But yeah, it's, it's definitely not bad without a doubt. All right. Yeah, I mean, all our turns are kind of just painted out here and I think that's fine. All right, here goes. So the Flame Demon's actually going first. That's not really a problem. So the Flame Demon goes, consumes an element. Um, you're consuming ice, but we're consuming it first. You would be consuming wind, or it's light, but we don't care, because we get to choose. You can use your best initiatives more often, that's true. Although, again, really, if initiatives is what matters, you can only use them one more time per scenario than you would with a stamina potion. Because the stamina potion, you can still get back your best initiative and one other card. The one time. So it's really just one more best initiative per scenario. Assuming you're using those for default moves. And it still requires using them for default moves. Which is still... Like, I mean, on some classes like the Crackguard, excellent. Or on the Mind Thief, decent. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, that's considering both. But... All right. Um, I'm... So... Trap here. It's actually kind of annoying. We're actually going to have to walk through this trap, aren't we? Touche, Flame Demon. Touche. That's four direct damage. That's actually really annoying. Ha! Huh. Well, they can occasionally matter. And yeah, I think I'll just get rid of the earth, I guess. And it creates fire. Okay, so Flame Demon's done. And then it is the Mind Thief's turn. We could jump over this to not take damage, but then we don't get to use this, which is just so good. What is the Earth Demon up to? Plus one moves, so he's going to attack someone. If we go down to here, the Earth Demon attacks us. No, not quite. Only if we use our boots of striding, which I don't want to have to use. Hmm. This is kind of tough, I think. I do take a lot less damage if I just jump down here after attacking this. I'm only missing out on attack three. It's not that important of attack three. Yeah, I think that's actually probably worth it. All right, let's use the top of Dark Frenzy. I'm going to consume the ice here just because it gives us one experience. So we make an attack six targeting the elite Wind Demon. Ooh. Creating ice. So again, two, four from the ice, two from Mind's Weakness is six, plus our plus two, so eight. This kills this. It is going to be them again next turn, but for now you are eliminated. Well, the thing is we couldn't attack first to see if we killed something because which thing we used for our attack actually mattered. So if we, because if we, if we wanted to jump, we need to attack with this. But theoretically, what we wanted to do was to attack with this because then we can move with this, which is such a better bottom move because it gives us a free attack and gives us ice. Fortunately, we flipped ice, and again the jump allows us to avoid the trap. If the flame demon hadn't created the trap, we would always be using this top and this bottom. But because it created the trap, it actually left an interesting decision. I think this was fine. the The issue isn't that it's an attack six. The issue is that the bottom of Dark Frenzy doesn't jump. Which means we can't move down here where we need to go without running through the trap. And we would also have to use Boots of Striding to prevent, to make it so that the Diviner's shielding, well, I guess the Diviner can move, but again, we would have had to move through the trap was the issue. If the trap wasn't there, I agree, we would always be using the top of Feedback Loop. All right, 
So then we have the bottom feedback loop as a move four jump. One, two, three, four to here. We also healed two uh, with this when we attacked. So back up to 11. All right. So then it is the Diviner's turn. Yeah, definitely just going to use the top of Protective Aura, creating light, gaining one experience, shield two, effect all allies within range two. I guess it's just shielding here. Is it better to make a single? I guess we could do a two target curse. That wouldn't actually hurt us at all because its retaliate range is three and we're outside of it. Is two shield on the Mind Thief or two curses better? It's actually a tough question. We're not going to get attacked that much this scenario. So one does have to wonder how valuable the two curses actually are. It's dark instead of light as well. We also gain one less experience. Dark is a bit more valuable, but it's not really because we're not playing any of our things which consume at this point. I guess we also, I mean, like either way, we're creating an element for them. Uh, one of their dark consumers is gone. The invis dark consumer isn't. Hmm. <sighs> this is actually a tough question. You can also flip some modifiers, but those don't really matter. I guess we have a chance of doing some damage to the Frost Demon. What's the range on you? Five, so you hit from there. Yeah, it's because in the end, we're not really shielding for much. We're really just shielding the Earth Demon's attack. Hmm. Actually, all right. So I'm going to lose that one experience. I think the best thing to do is actually kind of funny, but I'm actually going to, in the end, use the top of Call of the Nether, creating dark, and I'm actually going to attack the Earth Demon, and I'm just going to mobilize it. That's actually better. I mean, I can just use this. It's not like this is going to be that amazing here. I mean, it's not bad, but this is a great opportunity to use it. So we'll make an attack zero curse and mobilize targeting the Earth Demon. This actually just blanks his attack entirely, which is pretty good. All right, as usual, zero damage. Not super impressive. One curse, but most significantly, immobilize. Okay, so then it is the Krakart's turn. So, how are we attacking now? We should probably save the Piercing Bow, because there's going to be a new Elite Wind Demon out soon, which is pretty important. Although it's difficult to reach that in this, but still, I think that's got to be correct. Using the Piercing Bow here does get us some, sh some, ooh, some shield here, but we also have to move into range to take damage in this. I mean, eh, it's not bad either way. But I think I'd rather save it. This is also just much less threatening than the Elite Wind Demon. So I'd rather ha have three extra damage than the Elite Wind Demon. Wind Demon. So, yep, we'll just attack with Massive Boulder here. We create Earth. We gain one experience from having a backup ammo charge go off. Yeah, yeah, I know. Although I could compass this now. No, compass will be much more valuable. Um, so we have attack three, range three, first on the frost demon, and then on the uh, sun demon. We're gonna take one direct damage on the diviner. So frost demon, all right, four, sun demon, four. So the sun demon has two shield, so it takes two. Frost even has no shield, so it takes four. I know that we can repeatedly rock slide, but we, we set up back end ammo, so actually doing these turns of, I mean, doing two uh, two attack three range threes per turn is still quite good. All right, so the Frost Demon is going to just move to here. Lose its disarm. The Earth Demon is immobilized, so it's going to do nothing. And the Sun Demon is just also going to lose its disarm. Okay, so first it's the regular knight up here. We didn't fill this, but we'll get the disarm rift, I guess. So this is okay. And then the elite wind demon down here. This is the problem. Ah, man, elite wind demons. What a design. Okay, so short rest for the diviner. Really need to keep good initiative and disarm rift. Ooh, uh, no, not gonna lose this. I only regret losing this like reroll the disarm rift even then the immobilized rift still does something i mean yeah I, all right if i reroll and i hit the disarm rift i will regret rerolling but again it, it's a one out of eight so and this is so useful for the last two turns that it would be insane to lose this so let's pay one pay one life and reroll okay that is more than fine that's actually probably the worst card in our deck 
sometimes short rest rerolls do work out. All right, short resting here as well. Ooh, hmm. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, I think I have to accept losing that. My CC cards are so much better. Prioritizing the path was okay in our last scenario. It was helpful against the Night Demons. Um, when I say it's the worst card here, it's not that I'm saying that it's... I mean, when I say it's the worst card in our hand, I'm not saying that specifically that it's actually the worst card in our hand intrinsically. But uh, at this point, when like we're constantly in combat and facing all six enemy types, it doesn't change... like. There's not much we can do in a situation like this to play around some additional information for what one of the monsters is going to do, so the value is pretty limited, basically. And anyway, I mean, this is so valuable and the Disarm Rifts are so valuable. All right, so speaking of the Disarm Rifts, where are you, my friends? Void uh, Snare. Uh, so I really need to Disarm you as well, I think. Otherwise, we do the immobilize rifts now. It's not as good. Yeah. Up, 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 this one. I mean, 21, again, should be faster than the Wind Demons. Ugh. Well, we already got rid of their 9, so now they're 1 out of 5 to go before 21. This is definitely worth the risk. The upside is quite large. Unfortunately, if they do go that early, there's just nothing we can do about it. But I guess, actually, if they go that early, it just, I mean, we get disarmed, but that doesn't change that much, so it's actually okay. So, for the Mind Thief, do we need to actually stun this turn? Can we actually, since this is going to get disarmed, can we save the stun? I guess the Sun Demon's not getting disarmed. So we do need to stun the Sun Demon. So that's fine. So, a stun, and an Immobilize on the Earth Demon. We'll suck if the Earth Demon does its range attack, but again, it's only 1 out of 7. No reason to assume that that's going to happen. Alright, and then Crackheart, we're just doing two attack threes again. Which is pretty not bad. Okay, uh, no range attack, that's good. Yeah, you can't reach from where you are. You not moving is also quite good. Yeah, very good. You going find initiative. Oh, all right. So we're actually gonna use our boots of speed here. This is actually significant so that we can disarm. Actually, does this ever reach? How much movement does it have? Uh, it has four movement. One, two, three, four. The thing is, by going before it, though, we do get to disarm it for the following round, but we can also just rock slide next round, so it's not even sure that that actually matters much. So we'd really just be using our boots of speed for this. I think the boots of speed are probably more valuable later. I think I would rather save them. I don't think just getting, like, having the knight even disarmed for one, one coming turn, I don't think that's really worth the boots of speed here. All right, so sure, let's just let this go as it is. Well, actually, at the same time, what are you doing, even, Sun Demon? Oh, you're... Well, actually... I do stop the Immobilized Rift, yes, so I can also do that to stop it, I know. Um, hmm. It's an interesting question. So Sun Demon will move to attack all adjacent, so it'll be moving here. So can we actually, so what if we place our disarm rift here and we pull, do the pull rift to like, I mean here or whatever, this will actually move into the disarm rift this turn. So we don't actually need to stun this. Let's just double check that this is correct. Yeah, because it's going to target all adjacent enemies. So this is always the focus and then hits once hit one additional target. I mean, I guess it depends if the crack art moves. The crack art can't move. That is the one annoying thing. But that's still fine. I mean, that's worth it to then be able to stun... So then we can actually immobilize this, this turn. And stun. Well, this is getting disarmed if it comes in here. So we actually don't need to immobilize this either. Hmm. Actually derped a little bit by playing both these things. So I guess we immobilize this, stun this. Yeah, that actually is fine. Okay. So we're going to gain two experience here. We're going to create ice. We're going to do one, two, three, four. Attack two, immobilize here. And then attack one, stun here. Both uh, The first one with disadvantage. Okay, hmm. and the second one. All right, well, no damage anywhere, but that's okay. This was all about the CC. Not bad. Okay, so the Night Demon goes, loses the Immobilize. Then the Diviner goes, so we're going to place a Rift here. Use the top. All right, so we're going to use the top of Void Snare to place a Rift there. Whenever an enemy enters a Rift this turn, it gets disarmed. 
Yeah, because the Earth Demon is also going to come up. Yep, and get disarmed. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. Um, and then we're going to place a Pulley Rift. So what's happening next? We're going to have Frost Demon down here, and then Sun Demon up here. So would we rather have more Rifts down here? Well, we can place the Rift wherever we want, right? Rift here is definitely good. Let's give us a full Rift Wall. And then we can pull this towards any Rift. Because, we, yeah, we place a Rift Token, and then we pull something. Oh, no, 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 because we can't pull this to here, because then this won't go here. All right, so we actually have to place this here or here. I don't actually want it to be adjacent to the Cracker I guess, because the Cracker. Well, does the Cracker actually want to attack this this turn? Yeah, probably does. Probably wants to attack these two. Yeah, so let's pull it to here. All right, I mean, that's not as ideal, but it's worth it. So that gets disarmed. Cracker goes at 29, so we're first going to use the top of Crater. We're going to consume... Ah, but we could push it. Never mind. All right, no, no, never mind. This works, because we can actually push that away, then. So we can still do it like this, and we can pull it to here, because then we'll just push it with the Cracker. Beautiful. All right. Because I forgot that we had Crater. So we, did we gain our one experience? No, we consume the Earth, gain one experience. We're also going to gain one more experience for using a backup ammo charge. So we're doing attack three, range three, push two. So we'll target the... So I guess, yeah, we're going to use our piercing bow here because it's really necessary. And so that means we're going to target the Wind Demon and the Sun Demon. And I guess we'll push both of them. Because I guess I'd rather have this be here than here. Yeah. No, because it being... Yeah, 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 because I can attack this with... Yeah, that works. So we'll push them both. Why not? So... Well, I guess in that case, I could just leave this here. Eh. Pushing is fun. All right. Wind Demon and Sun Demon. Two and two. Well... Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Here we go. So Wind Demon first, and then Sun Demon. All right. Hail is back. Hey, Red Nanesh, or Red Nephilim. So we get three damage on the Wind Demon. And we get four damage on the Sun Demon. Since we used our Piercing Bow, we ignore all shield. Okay, so then they go. Wind Demon does nothing, is immobilized. Or, sorry, is disarmed. Flame Demon uh, consumes? Oh, dear god. Yeah, we should have disabled this. For some reason, I thought it was attacking like the Wind Demons had attacked before, it being part of the thing. But no, it's hitting absolutely everyone. All right, well, that that's unfortunate. So Hail, and then the Mind Thief, and then the Diviner, and then the Cragart. All for attack fives. Yeah, that, that was a bit of an oversight. Oh, oops, sorry. Both of these should have been pushed. Yeah, I, for, I just forgot to put move both of them. Um, I'm not sure if you have to. So I think this is, this is something that's been brought up before, and I don't remember if we've ever had a definitive answer. Because the question is, if you do like a... Um, because add target wouldn't make it any difference than... Let, let's, for example, say if you have like an, an attack... Three range three target three push two or something. In that case, do you get to choose individually for the push, or do you have to? If you use push on one, you use push on all of them. No problem. Because it would be the same rule then. We've had this discussion before, and I don't think it was ever conclusively ruled. Ah, oh, we saw the bottom of dust advance or rumbling advance though. Uh, we can't. Oh yeah, we can actually. We can rumbling advance up to here, doing one direct damage to this. Yeah, yeah sorry, I'm I'm forgetting the rest of my stuff. So, because I just did the top and I forgot the bottom. So rumbling advance to here, does one direct damage. This is fine because this will still move up to here because it wants to target all adjacent, so it'll still get disarmed. So there's just one free damage here, so why not? I can look it up, but I think intuitively the correct answer is all or none. That's what I thought as well, but I'm not actually sure anymore. Because ECO, well, anyway. Okay, so never mind. So now the cracker is not going to get hit. So it's just all of these that are getting hit. So hail, and then mind thief, and then diviner. So hail. Minus one. So five is four. Oops, so just on her. Then 10. And then Mind Thief. So five. And then Diviner. All right. Not bad. Frost Demon goes, is stunned. Earth Demon goes, 
moves up to here to hit more targets. He's consuming... Uh, we can choose, I guess, one of the ones that's going away. Do I, cause yeah, I want the ice. Oh, the fire was actually already consumed. So yeah, consumes the dark, creates earth, which is already there, but gets disarmed. And then the sun demon moves here and gets disarmed. Okay. Well, we're holding out as long as we can. So we have to survive to the end of round 10, correct? Projectile for 10 rounds, all right. So we just need to make it two more rounds, and then we can do our invis cheese. All right, so here we have a regular frost demon, which comes down here, and then an elite sun demon, which goes up here. All right, so short rest here for sure. Need rock slide more than anything. Yeah, at this point we can lose massive boulder because we just cannot lose rock slide. So it has to be absolute best initiative to be safe and a rock slide. Okay. Uh, yo, mind thief, huh? We have ice, so we can stun. We don't really need to stun this though because it's disarmed. Ooh, the immobilized rifts are actually really good here. And we similarly probably want to start best initiative rather than like throwing out curses or anything like that. I think it's just better to be safe than sorry. Because did you get better rest losses this time? I did. Uh, last First scenario, I got terrible rest losses. I had the exact same thing happen where I had a 1 out of 9 into 1 out of 8. And then here, though, it's going a little bit better. This time, I mean, this scenario. First, first scenario was real rough. So yeah, because this gets immobilized here, which is good. This, if the Mind Thief moves down here to attack, this gets immobilized here, which is also really good. So yeah, this is just generally quite good. So we're just going to run down and stun that, because we absolutely need to do that. And I guess we can use this. They've already played their 9 initiative invis, right? Yeah. So at this point, they can go at 2. If they go at the 2, I can't beat it. And other than that, with 10, I go fast and everything. So this gives me a free attack and some free ice. Our separate attacks from ability like A we resolve separately or simultaneously. They resolve separately in any order the player wishes. Separate attack abilities in the same action are resolved in the sequence they are written. No attacks are resolved simultaneously. You can resolve one attack, including any additional effects of the attack, like push or pull, then resolve the next. Our separate attacks from ability... Uh, it cut off a little bit. I'm not sure if you're trying to add something more there. It seems to imply that the push or pull is resolved separately, though. Okay, here goes. Ah, oh, the wind even gets the two. Oh, that's so bad. Oh, that's so bad. Um, you just are deciding individual target basis. Okay, so we're actually going to use our boots of speed here to go from eight to one on the diviner. This is extremely important. This way, we will be the one getting attacked by the wind demon and getting disarmed. Because we can't have the mind thief getting disarmed here. Um, all right. So yeah, we have enough health that we'll be fine. So is the Night Demon moving? He is. The Frost Demons are also moving. Yeah, so the Disarm Rifts are still really good here. Sun Demon. Yeah, range attack, so be it. Ooh, we do have to protect Hail, though. Uh, Frost Demon's also an issue? Hmm. Is it six health? Yeah. Actually, kind of have some problems here. But there's nothing we can do about it this turn because this stops a bunch of attacks. So I guess the Mind Thief could go here and just stun this one. I mean, hopefully kill this one instead. That's maybe better. Rather than stunning this, we'll just worry about this after. All right, yeah, so we'll activate Dimensional Divide. So we place a Rift Token at range 5. It'll be an immobilizing rift. Oh, but if we if we don't go here, oh, but the diviner can actually just move down to here then. Yeah, I know I have to remove one. I'm just trying to figure out where I want to place one. What's the flame demon up to? Flame demon's doing nothing, so that's good. 
The Earth Demon ugh, is actually being annoying. He's going to do a bunch of immobilizing. So wherever we are, we're going to be. It's at range 3. Yeah, so the Mind Thief probably does have to move up then. Ooh, this is actually quite, quite sketchy. Okay. So, yeah, that, that's like really the worst thing he could do by far since he's disarmed. So that's a problem. The Sun Demon, we can't... I mean, we can place a Rift here to mobilize him. It's not going to change much. No, he's not even going to move because he's already at range 3. So that doesn't change anything. The Frost Demon... Yeah, so we the Frost Demon will go here and be able to attack. So we need to move here with the Diviner. That's fine. That works all right. So where do we even place this Rift? It doesn't seem like it really matters where we place it so much. But I guess we'll get rid of this Rift. And place one. No, because we're going to place a rock there. So that's kind of irrelevant. I guess I'll place a rift here, to be honest. Oh, wait, but we get to place rocks first. So we can actually even place a rock here. Here. And here. So we'll deal damage to the diviner. But this will make it so that there's only one hex that they can move through to get in, which is so good. And then we can keep a rift there. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely worth it. All right. So we activate our rift thing, and then we have a move too. So now we can actually move kind of... A, so we don't need to move... But we need to make sure that we tank this attack. So I guess, we're, yeah, we're just going to stay where we are. And I'll just go ahead and use an endurance potion charge now. And get this back. Just for initiative. Also to have used an item. We, so we, oh, we used another item because we used the speed here as well. So we've used one, two, three, four thus far. Yep. Okay. All good. So we are done. So then the wind demon goes. Um, consumes any element. Consuming earth. Creating wind. Attacks at minus one. So normally four. So here three on the diviner. Oops. So two damage to the diviner. It's fine. Diviner gets disarmed. All right. So then the Mind Thief goes. So where do we want the attack three to go? I guess onto the Sun Demon. These things don't really matter anymore. I mean, this Sun Demon matters, but it's just way too high of health. This one we can at least potentially kill. So we'll move to here with the bottom of Dark Frenzy. We gain one experience and create a new ice. Um, then we're going to just use our healing potion before we forget to go up to nine. And then we're going to use the old ice with the top of Frigid Apparition to make an attack five, six, seven. So making an attack seven on the Frost Demon. And this. All right, good. So the Frost Demon dies, which is really important. Uh, so that's a kill. Is that our first kill, actually? Maybe. Hmm. Should have been tracking, but I don't think we're making it to five anyway, so I guess that doesn't really matter. Oh, crap. Nope. This was supposed to be the attack three on the Sun Demon. Sorry. So that's not dead yet. Well, let me just flip the second one. Oh, God. Okay, it's fine. Whew. Just. So, yeah, because I, I said what I was doing with Dark Frenzy, but I forgot. So this was a three plus one is four. is two shields, so two damage. And then our attack on the Frost Demon. Good thing that we used the Ice for Frigid Blade. So our attack was a 5, plus 2 from Frigid Blade is a 7, minus 1, 6. The Frost Demon had 6 life exactly, so we did kill it. <sighs> okay. And then there's... An... Oh yeah, and then we get a heal 2 from Sound Scream. We're definitely healing Hail for 2. Because she is the most important thing here. Then the Kragart goes. So we're going to unfortunately create Earth. I'd love to not create Earth, but I don't think that's really an option here. I've got to do these. So I gain one experience, create Earth. I get to drop three rocks. Drop a rock here, for sure. Drop a rock here, for sure. And drop a rock here. Yep. So two damage to the Diviner. Then to four. I guess I'm going to put this on top so I don't forget that it's there. Uh, two damage to you, down to five. Two damage to you, down to 18. Two damage to you, down to seven. 
Oh, Rift Hexes are not empty? I didn't know that. In that case, I guess I wouldn't have placed a Rift here previously. Oh god, well that changes something. What is I'm a big I mean like if I had known that I would have placed my rifts completely differently. Oh god, alright. That's a lot more annoyance than it's worth then. Ah, that's interesting. Alright, um This is super obnoxious then. Cool, cool. Cool, cool, cool. So, like, I, I didn't want this rift here. I just placed it there because it was free, and now it's actually blocking me from placing an obstacle there, even though it's doing absolutely nothing. Similarly, this rift also didn't do anything, and it's also just creating a big issue. <sighs> All right. Um... So then at least I can place one here. It doesn't really do anything, though. Nothing's running there. Nice. Oh, okay. And so this actually changes a lot because if I'd known that, I obviously would not have. You could have actually told me this when I was planning the turn because this actually changes everything. Because originally I believed that I would be able to place this here, which would mean that this wouldn't run around this way. Now this is going to come here, but the fact that it gets immobilized doesn't matter at all because it's going to attack the diviner who's adjacent to it. I didn't need to move the diviner away though because I was planning on placing a rock here. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> so now this is actually terrible because now the Frost Demon attacks, even though I could have very easily prevented it. Yeah, yeah, I understand. It's just like the worst possible time. Like it's like intentionally making things much more difficult now by, <laughs> by dropping this at the one moment when it actually like really matters. God. Uh, so there's absolutely nothing we can do. So these rocks do nothing. <laughs> This is, I mean, like, we're just taking free attacks. Like, we, we literally could have just moved away without issue. Or no, moved up to here, I guess, is, would have been the correct thing. Placing one next to Hale doesn't change anything, though. It also does damage to Hale. This will still go here and attack the Diviner. All right, whatever. I'm just going to retroactively move up here with the Diviner. This wouldn't have changed anything. Could this, uh, this wouldn't have impacted any of the decisions here. And if I had known this, obviously, like I had the Diviner's bottom move and I hadn't used it, I'm going to fix this. Because again, I was playing with incorrect information. Since rifts can be placed on, on empty hexes, I had no reason to assume that a rift hex wasn't empty. All right, no rifts do have to be placed on empty hexes. Never mind. So I guess I am, was wrong to make that assumption, right? No, it's unoccupied. Yeah. So, all right, anyway. So the Diviner had their bottom move. She would just move to here. This would have still accomplished the same thing here, except... No, but I guess this doesn't change anything, because then this would probably move away. So this has minus one movement, so it has four movement. So no, it would still end up, yeah, so then this makes things a lot worse for us regardless. Oh no, because then we could place a rock here. Yes, this will still work. Okay, so then this would have moved away before anything else. So where would this have moved to? So it needs two movement. 1, 2 to here, or 1, 2 to here. Either way, attacking the Diviner, where it would have gone from. Gone 2, so I guess to here is fine. Yeah, that works. There's nowhere shorter. No, because it couldn't move to here. All right, yeah. So we would have moved here with the Diviner so that we can fix this Frost Demon problem. And then everything else would have happened exactly the same way. All right. So this goes there, which still does two damage to the Viner, but at least it's not lethal. And then in the end, it does do two damage here and here. I didn't, I did reset the damage up there, okay. So we would have moved to here then with our bottom first of unstable upheaval. And then, yeah, this would allow us to place them in the rock here. Well, we were already able to do that. Down to 16. And place a rock here just to get damage on this. Not that I necessarily think I'm going to kill it, but who knows. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm getting immobilized basically anywhere I go. 
So the Earth Demon heals itself for 3, 20, and immobilizes all of us. Which is actually really problematic. I'm not going to actually bother placing that on her, it's just taking up space for nothing. Okay. And heal itself, and it loses its disarm. The Night Demon goes, moves to here, wound, and immobilize. Sun Demons go. So this one just loses its disarm. They're consuming an element. I guess I'd rather have them... Well, ice is going to get used by these anyway, but that's kind of free. Oh, the earth was already used. Yeah, so I guess wind, creating light. Why not? So from there, this one can attack hail or the mind thief, but the mind thief has lower initiative, so we'll attack the mind thief. All right, plus one. This is normally a... Oh, no, it's with advantage. Whoops. It's been a while since they've attacked. Either way, six. Um, yeah, we should just lose a card to this, I think. Neither of these cards are... Oh, I actually want the late initiative afterwards. It's also a good effect, but yeah, I gotta lose this. All right. So we'll lose that to negate damage. Um, okay, Frost Demon goes, consumes an element light to make ice. And from here, it actually cannot move because it, it considers both these spaces obstacles since it would get immobilized if it moved there. Flame Demon consumes the ice and takes one damage down to six. Okay, and that's the end of the round. Oh no, we've got a bunch of cards left, so we need to short rest. So we will do just that. That's fine to lose at this point. So, yeah, we're just going to do range to mobilize and bottom stun. Since we're mobilized, we can't move anywhere. Mobilizing the sun demon should hopefully stop it from attacking. Again, it would only attack with a range attack. It's already used two of them, so it has one range attack left. It's not too super threatening. It's probably going to do something like a heal, but I don't really care about that. Flame demon does not move. It does not have a move on its thing, and it only attacks adjacent enemies, so it does nothing. All right, so we just did ice and sun that spawn. So next we have earth up here. Not going to bother with the health. Yeah, I understand. And Elite Flame down here. Okay, so what now? So next turn we can start the Invis Cheese. We just have to hold out for one more turn. Shielding all everyone doesn't help us too much though, huh? Are we going to survive for one more turn in the spot we're in? Being immobilized here is pretty rough. Oh, we also forgot to get back on stable upheaval. Is our endurance potion? Whatever. We're supposed to do that. There's no reason not to. Alright. Um. So killing stuff is kind of past. At this point, I think it's just healing time. We're not close to being able to kill anything else. Yeah, I mean, I haven't set this thing's health, but it also doesn't matter. So I suppose we should just do double heal then. Try to keep the Diviner alive this turn. The Diviner can stun one of these things. Ah, you can teleport while being immobilized, though. So we actually can get out of this terrible spot. So we just do a default attack and then teleport somewhere. Yeah, ooh, but not with that one. So we can swap spots with an enemy. Yeah, swapping spots with this is probably fine. We're actually going to use this bottom once. I mean, it's kind of just worse than a regular teleport, but it just lets us keep this card, which is so important. Okay, here we go. All the enemies. All right, so flame demons aren't attacking. Earth demons also not attacking. Sun demons melee attack. That's good. Frost demon melee attack. That doesn't really matter. Wind demon 21. It's annoying, but not the end of the world. There's only... Ah, but we can't actually reach that one. Yeah, that's a little bit annoying. And Night Demon, 7. Okay, well, Night Demons are first. Except you're immobilized. Takes one from its wound. Down to 13. Oops. All right. 
So then it is the, the uh, Mind Thief's turn. So what are we stunning? So this Sun Demon will get to attack, but we can stun that one. The Earth Demon's not attacking, so that's fine. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, this is a little bit annoying. We don't actually really need to stun anything. I mean, this, but the Diviner is also just going to be able to stun this. Otherwise, we have nothing really in range. I guess we can use the stun on this and then use the immobilize on the Frost Demon. Because the Frost Demon should actually reach to attack, right? Yeah, it will. All right. So let's do that. So we gain two experience. We create ice. We will do an attack two range four immobilize targeting the Frost Demon. One, two, three, four. Okay. Two damage. It's so insignificant, the damage, but sure. And it's immobilized. And then we're going to use the bottom of First Edge to attack the Sun Demon up on the top of the map. Hmm, this actually does one damage. Oops. And this is stunned. Okay. And then the Diviner goes. So we're going to begin by using the top of Clairvoyance as a default attack 2, targeting the Sun Demon down here. We'll be using our Stun Powder. And I guess... So we need to use 7 total. Well, we can pop these two whenever we want. We don't need to use the Goggles here. Although I guess we're never making another attack, so it doesn't really matter, so we might as well use the Goggles. Maybe we get like a Heal modifier? Nah. Or it changes absolutely nothing. God, our modifier deck is awful. <laughs> I mean, I say that, but... But, like, really, we don't flip much, and we flip a lot of plus zeros. Eventually, once we get rid of the other plus zeros, it'll actually be good. But for now, we just have too many plus zeros in our deck. I feel like a tinker. <laughs> um, all right. So it's no damage. And then we use the bottom of Clairvoyance. Or, sorry, the bottom of Call of the Nether to swap positions. <gasps> oh, we were disarmed. <sighs> So we couldn't do that. So we did do some very stupid stuff here again. It's actually kind of just difficult to see. I mean, it shouldn't be that difficult. Whatever. All right. So put those things back on top. Reshuffle. So we didn't use this, nor this. I only put one of these here. So this doesn't get stunned. So now I actually should have immobilized this one and stunned this one, obviously. Um, with the Mind Thief. But of course, it's too late. I immobilized this one. Because obviously, this doesn't hit as hard as this does. But I forgot that I was disarmed on the Diviner. Oh, well. So... And the Diviner is going to take critical damage here, huh? Yeah, now this this being the Teleport actually does suck. Still has to be this, though. I mean, it's attacking us afterwards, at least. All right, yeah, we'll swap positions with this. Okay. Flame demons go. Consume our ice. Oops. Consume our ice and create fire. So this one moves to here. Places a trap here. This one stays where it is and places a trap here. God. What a map. Alright. Wind demon goes. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. So attacks the Kragart. Uh, pull one. Ooh, wow, that's actually really vicious. All right. So plus one, its attack is normally for four, but here plus one is five. One, two, three, four, five. And then we get pulled into this, which is four more damage. I guess I'm actually just going to lose... I'll take the 4, but I'll lose a card to negate the 5. I don't really care about some of these cards. Alright, there we go. Negating damage at this point is the most significant thing. And a 5 is a pretty big amount of damage. Alright. So that's that. Would be all figures within range 3. You can only be attacked by figures within range 3 this round. The same effect than you intend. Mm, it's a very similar effect. I mean, the one distinction is 
it was only meant to affect ranged attacks. Which was like a thematic thing, obviously. Because that version would make it so that a melee enemy at range 4 couldn't attack a an ally at range 3. Or, I mean, well, so, something at melee at range 4 couldn't attack something at melee, in or something within range 3. But, I mean, I'm not... I'm not 100% attached to the fact that it has to be ranged only. So if the easiest way to template it is not to have to include mention of range, then that's not a problem for me. All right. Um, so that's done. God, what a vicious pull, really. So now the wind, or now the crack art goes. So we're going to use the top of rumbling advance, creating earth, healing ourselves for four. And we're going to use the bottom of Earth and Clod as a heal two. Is it even worth healing the Diviner at this point? Or is it better just to heal Hail? I wonder. Diviner's going to have to lose a card to the Sun Demon attacking regardless. Uh, it's more that the the dome blocks projectiles but someone can still forcibly put a blade through it the idea is that it doesn't it takes a lot less to deter the path of a projectile than it does to deter some like a physical strike But anyway, this isn't really a discussion for right here. I'd rather focus on this and not talk about two things at once. Please, thank you. All right, uh, so we have heal two at range three. So again, it can either be on the diviner or hail. Protecting hail is the crucial thing here, but we kind of need the diviner to be alive for the combo we're going to do. Yeah, yeah, I, I understand. It's just like, it it is still distracting and it's not has nothing to do with what I'm doing here. So I understand why and like, it's fine to ask, but ultimately... I'm just going to try to focus on this. Uh, how much does two health actually on the Diviner make a difference? I mean, being at four health probably doesn't change much. This attack, we're still going to have to lose a card to. We can still lose cards to short rest rerolls. Yeah, I think it's better just to heal Hail, to be honest. In case our whole thing messes up anyway. All right, so we'll heal Hail with that. So now the Frost Demon goes. It's immobilized, so it does nothing. So we just spawn, we spawned Earth and Flame, so it's going to be back to Night and Wind next, just to be sure. All right, so the Earth Demon once again has Earth, so it mobilizes all of us. It heals itself, this doesn't really matter. So the Sun Demons go. So this one's stunned, but this one will attack the Diviner. Attack, but we're sure losing a card. Yep. Yeah. All right. So initiative matters the most at this point, plus this card, so we can just lose this. That doesn't matter much at this point. Mm. All right. That's that. Uh, it's time to pull off the combo then. Just hoping that our initiatives are fast enough to not get us too destroyed here. What is Craggy doing? Do we have any items that do anything? A compass? I don't know if that does much. Probably should have used that already at some point, huh? Obstacles. We can place an obstacle here. I don't know if that really will do much, but there's no reason not to, I guess. And we'll just use, I guess, this for good initiative, either way. We'll see what it does in the end. All right, here goes. Oh, so we need to summon, sorry. So we placed fire, earth fire. So now we need regular knight. Oh, geez. We just actually got to be here. And elite wind. Here goes. So the mind thief's up first. At 10. Yeah, we never accomplished this. 
We never long rested, so we will accomplish this. We just gotta spam all our items. That's fine. Actually, we're disarmed, but now we can. Wow, we can't so easily spam all our items, huh? We're not actually gonna make it in the end. We're gonna be one short because we didn't get to attack. So that disarm, that's really brutal. Uh, I want that check mark so badly. I might be able to. I might be able to make it work. We'll see. Anyway, my thief's up first. We are mobilized, so we can't go anywhere or attack anything. Um, we can use the bottom of Dark Frenzy. Yeah, creating ice doesn't really matter. So we'll gain one experience, create ice, make attack three, range three. I guess on the Sun Demon down here. Why not? So five, so three actual damage, putting it down to four. Okay, and I won't activate this because I want to keep this card. Um... I guess, yeah, actually, I'll just use the top of Feedback Loop as a default, because I need this initiative. I'll just do the top of this as a default action, and recover it with an Endurance Potion Charge, and then I'm going to use my Cloak Invisibility. All right. And then the Diviner's up. So we're going, so we're mobilized. We can't do anything. I'm not going to throw cards away here. That would be insane. I'm going to pop my Cloak Invisibility, though. Use this this. That's really annoying. Um, and I'm going to use the top of dimensional transfer targeting hail. So I gain one experience. I create dark and hail is invis and stunned. I'm not going to bother placing the stun because it doesn't do anything. Okay. I can always pop this another turn. That's not what matters right now. There's no reason to create another element. Yep. Yeah. All right. So the frost demons go. They're going to heal themselves for three and immobilize everything within range two. Uh, is actually only this frost demon left? We didn't create another one just now? No. I guess we killed the previous one. Yeah, we killed the one that was up there. All right, so it heals itself for how much? Again, three, consuming ice. And mobilize the crack art, who's already immobilized. All right, so speaking of the crack art, going to use the bottom of avalanche, creating earth. I'm going to place an obstacle here. Can't place the other one. And then we're going to use the top of Kinetic Assault to do an attack four, targeting the Earth Demon. Basically, because why not? Actually, if we move something with the... No, even if we move something with the compass, we can't place another obstacle. Okay, four damage to the Earth Demon. Just for good measure. Um, is there anything worth compassing? Now, at this point, where things are doesn't really matter at all, so... Do we have a bottom attack? No. Yeah, we do. We still have Void Snare. All right. So we actually can use this. So it is possible. We have to not lose Void Snare, nor Invis. Oh. It's actually hard, because we need to go fast next round. Hmm. Oh, well. All right. Uh, Flame Demon. I mean, I'm literally going to have to resolve a million things here. This is insane. So they do have fire. So all adjacent enemies suffer two damage. Ooh, okay, so Crycart and Hail both suffer two. Okay. And they both attack. I guess this one has to move away. Ah, but then... No, but this happens first, yeah. Move it to there, I guess. And they both attack the Crycart. Their attacks are at minus two. So normally five, here three. Three damage, take it. One damage, take it. So we take four total. And wounded. Uh, Night Demon is not moving. Night Demons are not moving, so we don't need to mess with them. Earth Demon is once again consuming Earth to immobilize. Just chain, chain immobilizing us. Kills for three. Uh, let's mobilize target all. Yeah, so it doesn't immobilize there. Sure. Wind Demons. So they don't consume the earth here, so they do have the range. One, two, three, four. I think they both have enough range easily. Yeah. So this is going to be two attack fours on the cry cart. Three, take it. Five, we'll lose a card. Um, yeah, goodbye, heaving swing. And then the sun demons go. Hmm. 
Marines, so they're making range four attacks. This one needs to move to here, right? No, sorry. Yep, so we've got an attack five with advantage and another attack five with advantage. Okay, five will take it. Six, and we'll lose a card. Okay. And that's the end of the round. So the Mind Thief can actually long rest here. I guess we didn't need to bring this card back. Oh well, doesn't change anything either way. Hale lost her invis. So we short rest. Yep, that's fine to lose. So now we have to, oh, sorry, and then, so there we just spawned this and this, so that was here and here. So now we've got a Frost Demon up here and an Elite, one of you down here. So now we have a really difficult question, which is, do we try to have, I mean, all right, so we're always playing this card and it's never our initiative. If we play Voids in our bottom, we can actually get our check mark. But the problem is we go at 30 initiative, so a lot can happen to Hail in that time. I think it's I think it's too likely that we fail the scenario. It sucks that we're, we could have just used it earlier, or used this earlier. If we hadn't been disarmed that one time, we're going to be literally one item use away, right? Because it was one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, and we need seven. Ugh. But if we use Void Snare Bottom, it's just too risky that Hale dies. I mean, all right, how many things will actually attack Hale? I guess that's the question. Really? Maximum three things? Although, three things can still kill Hale. Very easily, in fact. By 30 initiative. God. We don't have the boots to change stuff either. I guess Krykart can do some healing on Hale. Yeah, sure, we lose this. In that case, we can put Hale up to 15 again. Then it's unlikely that three attacks kills Hale. I'm gonna go for it. It's a bit, I mean, no, it's definitely very greedy, but I really want check marks on the Diviner. It's driving me insane to keep flipping all these zeros. I really wanna fill out my perk deck. So I think, I mean, it, it's crazy to do this, but it's worth trying, I think. All right, here we go. 21. 68, 50, 49. All right, good. Whew. The things which we're going to attack her are mostly not attacking her, so we should be okay. Okay, okay. All right, so Night Demon 3. It can actually move, so I guess I have to move it. Plus one, so it's five movement. I'm not dealing with the wound. One, two, three, four. Can't move more than that. Then this Night Demon comes here and attacks the Cry card. Attacks at minus one, so four. Uh, so we have to lose a card. Sure. Alright, so then the Krakart's up at 13. We take one damage from our wound. Just pop a minor healing potion. Up to six. Lose the wound. Then we'll just use the top of Rumbling Advance on the on Hail. So we create Earth. Just to be safe, we heal Hail up to what was our maximum health again? I think it was 15, right? 16. 14. 14. So actually, we only heal health for two. But still, every point matters, I think. Okay. So then the Wind Demons go. So Wind Demon 2 will attack us. And then Wind Demon 3 will attack Hale. 1, 2, 3. Yep. So the first one on us. Oh, it's also going to pull us. Can't pull us anywhere. Okay. First one on us. Okay. We have to, oh, we're at 6. We don't actually have to lose a card to this. Plus 1. It's 5. Yeah, sure. We'll take it. Okay. Then the other Wind Demon attacks Hail. Plus zero, so four damage to Hail. All good. Manage to be greedy and get away with it. All right. So on the top, so we're going to gain two experience. Create Dark. Use the top of Dimensional Transfer to Invis and Stun Hail. And then we use the bottom of Void Snare. We'll just attack. It doesn't matter really what we attack. I guess we'll attack the Earth Demon with the bottom of Void Snare. 
and we'll use the sun powder and our goggles. And we'll use this to create uh, wind. They already created wind anyway. All right, so that puts us up to eight. So we're good. All right, so I'll just flip for my attack on the earth demon, which has advantage, stun, and immobilize. All right, we did a bit of damage. I'm not going to bother. I guess I will put the stun on him, though. And we are no longer in this here either. Okay, so we win. Uh, let me just... Well, yeah, I, I gotta grab water in a second. I'm not gonna bother going through to flip all the rest of this stuff. It would just take a bunch of additional time for absolutely nothing. It is impossible for us to lose at this point. Hail goes at 99, which is when she loses the invis. They're not. The, none of the enemies are performing something which does direct damage. She's at 12 life anyway, or 10 life anyway. The Mind Thief also goes at 99 because she's long resting. And so the Mind Thief has cards in discard more than enough. Hail can never die here. The Mind Thief can never die. The Crackheart and the Diviner will both most likely become exhausted, but again, this doesn't matter because the Mind Thief is alive and Hail is alive. Our Invis Cheese strategy worked. Ooh, Dimensional Transfer. Carrying the end of the scenario. <sighs> yep, so again, I'm not going to bother through, going through all this. It is literally impossible for us to lose. We did successfully win here. All right. So let's do our post-scenario stuff. First, I'm going to go quickly refill my water. I'll be right back. All right, we're back. So let's have a look at what we accomplished here. Uh, Mind Thief did not get a check mark, unfortunately. Craigart did get a check mark, took only short rests, and the Diviner also got her check mark, thanks to our gamble, gamble at the end. Gamble, gamble. All right, let's put those away. So Mind Thief gained 11 plus 14 again, so 25 experience. Oops. So we're three experience away from leveling. Hmm, rough. Okay. And no money. Okay. So here we gain 20 experience in the crack art. So we level. And we gained a check mark. So we'll actually have two perks. Nice. Okay. And we also gained 18 experience over here. Which does also give us a level. Oops, no, we don't need to do that here. And we got a check mark, which means we'll also get two perks. Beautiful. All right, great. So first, though, we have to deal with the rewards for the scenario. OK, so the Rift neutralized. We already have that. Plus one prosperity. Puts us to prosperity three. We won't spoil prosperity three stuff today since the VOD and the uh, stream title are prosperity two, but we will get prosperity three items when we resume this on next Thursday. Uh, 100 gold each. This money must immediately be spent on enhancements. All right, so just write that down here. So we've got to immediately do some enhancing, but we are prosperity three, so we can enhance some other cards now. All right, so we have 167 gold on the Diviner. So now we have to ask ourselves, yeah, I mean, it's not likely that we're gonna keep anticipating intricacies at level nine. So I guess it's gotta be called to the nether that we enhance. 
I mean, we basically... We've already looked through all our cards before. Unfortunately, we can't level up first, so we couldn't take a higher level card. It's not like we'd be able to afford that to enhance that anyway. Um, but yeah, basically... We've already looked through all our cards, and we singled out the two best enhancements by a significant margin, being either an additional curse on the bottom here, or an additional hex on the top here. Um, the only thing is, like I said, I'm just not sure that I'll end up keeping this card level 9. Although, like I said, it is almost a better card than this. But this, theoretically... I mean, we're up to 9 perks now, so at some point it should start being good. And getting an extra hex on here is actually going to make a big difference. It's going to consistently allow us to hit 3 targets. It's like a really big difference. And maybe even... Relatively infrequently, but still not insignificant amount of the time, four targets, which does make this a lot better. Like, basically, recently, we're consistently hitting two targets. Here, we're going, like, from two to four, really, with just this one hex, which is a really big difference. So, I guess in both cases, it's kind of adding an additional curse. Obviously, this is adding, I mean, adding two additional curses. This is adding two additional curses on a bottom action, which is nicer. It also costs 50 more gold. I mean, I guess the question is, really, should I, should I actually keep this card over Call of the Nether when I'm level nine? I was already saying how I think that this card's actually better than Call of the Nether. But, well, let's continue. Let, I mean, let's give this a chance with a with an excellent perk deck at some point. It deserves it, right? So we'll go ahead and enhance this. This is exactly with the 100 gold that we get. So there we go. It's like a hammer, the symbol, or the shape. All right, so that costs us 100 gold, and we're good. Okay, so then we've got old Kragkins. Um, so we have Frostbite 3 now, so we're not locked into having to enhance this. So in that case, what would we like to enhance? I mean, we could still enhance the top here, just to make it a much better action. Put plus one move on rolling advance isn't it bad. And then also like put a heal or a bless on the top of rumbling advance. But if we put plus one move on the bottom, it makes more sense not to put stuff on the top. Could we do plus one move here and then still improve the top here? Yeah, I guess we certainly could. Probably got enough money for it. So we've got 200 gold total. Yeah, I think that makes sense. I mean, plus one move here is really nice. This bottom is really good. It scales really well. I mean, it's a bot. It's not that it scales very well, but it's a bottom that we'll always be using at every level. So, and while we will use the top a fair amount of times as well, the bottom still gets more use. There's just not... I mean, like, of the other cards, I mean, all right, well, Avalanche doesn't come to most scenarios. Explosive Punch does. But, like, what would we put here? Jump? Uh, hmm. That's an interesting question, actually. Because it's true that we don't actually have any jump. Because... Yeah, I mean, sure, I guess it can get replaced at level 9. The truth is, though, level 9 crack art is just kind of dumb. So I won't really play much level 9 crack art. I mean, destructive, whatever, mass of destruction, destructive ridiculousness. When I say dumb, I mean, like, broken. I mean, and don't get me wrong. I don't have any issue whatsoever with having, like, broken cards at level 9. I, I think this is a perfectly fine design. Like, this isn't a design that bothers me at all. Um... I think it's like I think it's perfectly fine for some people to like get to level nine and just get like this super powerful thing. Like it's kind of the reward for your journey and get to just like have a kind of like a power fantasy when you get level nine and do some really powerful stuff. Um, I think it's very interesting, but yeah, first of all, I mean higher level monsters do need to be harder. But also more than anything, I mean like it just yeah. So first of all, I agree. If if higher level monsters were more difficult, then that would be one thing as well. But as it is for me, like I can have a little bit of fun with getting to level nine and playing with it for a couple like a couple scenarios maximum. But beyond that, it, it eliminates a lot of the challenge in the game, which is obviously what I look for. So the point is, I'm not really going to spend much time with a level nine character because of blind destruction. So even though I, I understand it's perfectly fine for other people, it's not like I, I'm not super concerned with my level nine build with enhancing based on level nine build because once I get to level nine, I'm just going to try to retire pretty quickly and move on to the next um so the thing is though i am actually i am wondering about jump because i i, I would like to try the new brutal momentum meteor is good just i mean this bottom of 23 initiative is so nice 
but we could basically just make a slightly worse meteor just by putting jump on the bottom of explosive punch. It is so. I mean, five initiative is a big difference though. Twenty three and twenty eight are not the same initiative at all. Ugh. Yeah, I'm not sure I want to do that. I mean, I might not take meteor at seven. I probably should take brutal just to see how it is. I mean, I'm sure I have to, but I'm not sure that that actually means that I want to put jump on um, explosive punch. We've also got enough ways to like put things into traps. And I don't frequently need to like jump past enemies. Uh, yeah, I think just doing these two enhancements is actually fine. And then we're still not prosperity lock because then we can still end up putting bless on the top of rumbling advance when we get more money. I guess that's another consideration. The problem is most of Craigart's cards are like one half cards. Yeah, jump on rock slide. Well, actually, you can't even put jump on rock slide. It doesn't even have an enhancement dot. It certainly could have an enhancement dot if we're being perfectly honest, though. I mean, putting jump on the bottom rock slide would cost you 125 gold. Yeah, it would actually be a pretty powerful enhancement, but it like it's a pretty narrow effect, and the other half of rock slide is so incredibly good that like it could certainly have a dot. There would be no risk there. So are there any other cards that we use both halves of? Not really. Not at all, basically. I mean, the, both halves that are enhanceable. Massive Boulder is always the top. I mean, Massive Boulder top can be enhanced as well. No, I think just doing these two is fine. Again, this sets us up well now, and it gives us something to enhance later as well with Rumbling Advanced Top, so I think this makes sense. All right, so this will cost us 30 gold there. So that puts us down to 70 here. Oops. So what do we want to put on the top of Heaving Swing is the question. I think plus one attack is probably just fine. Could be Wound as well, because it is very good against enemies with Shield. So Wound is actually maybe better. Our party doesn't have much Wound either. So there's not a ton of overlap. Yeah, I think that's actually probably fine. All right. So Wound would be 70. So this is 150 then. So that leaves us with 20 gold. It's also like I don't mind spending a little bit more. Wound Rift, yeah. Wound Rift is the only wound we have, although we're going to probably end up putting Wound on the bottom of Purse Edge. Actually, I'm not sure since we have Prosperity 3 now. But yeah, basically, we, we don't have much Wound. So in general, for anyone who's watching, Wound is typically a more cost-effective enhancement than plus one. Um, the risk, obviously, with Wound is that it stacks diminishingly. Like, the more Wound you have, the worse Wound becomes. So it's kind of limited. It depends on your party. If you have some amount of wound in your party, the wound obviously gets a lot worse. But if you don't really have any wound, or again here, like we have like one source of wound, and it's it's not even that common that it puts wound on multiple targets. It typically ends up just wounding one target when you use the wound rift, maybe two. Um, there's not too much of a risk of wound overlap. And again, heating swing is particularly very good against high shield enemies because of the nature of doing the direct damage. And wound is also good against high shield enemies, so this just has a natural pairing. Um, and it's also the fact that yes, we certainly can put the bless on top here, but I'm not really in a rush to, so I'd rather do a more like a more expensive enhancement here, since we're in, like we're soon going to be prosperity limited and have nothing to spend gold on anyway. Yeah, she doesn't take that much damage. We have enduring. I mean, in uh, doesn't in regenerate costs fifty, right? Regenerate should cost thirty. Like ever enhancing regenerate over bless or strengthen is. I mean, the Mind Thief can take advantage of it without a doubt, but just, I'm not worried about the Mind Thief taking too much damage. We've already got Empathetic Assault, which we're spamming anyway because of the Strength. Then. All right. Um, so we have 214 gold. Sadly, we can't do our beautiful Disarm Enhancement here because that's 125 plus 150, so 275. Yeah, so we're a little bit short on that. Uh, so we do need to be careful here. Because we don't want to be prosperity locked either. So the cards where we can use both halves, it's a level six card. It's just too expensive. I mean, we could put just plus one down here because we will use this bottom basically every rest cycle. But we also try to use this top every rest cycle, and it's just so much cheaper. So we'll put a plus one here, and then we can even do probably wound here as well. I think we have enough. Wound here is 150 and plus one, so it's 200 total. Yeah, why not? That works. We're, we are going to be prosperity locked now, though, is the one downside. But I think that's okay. 
it's not like we would ever enhance the top here. So even if we did enhancement down here now, it's not like we're ever going here because it's just so much. This at, at level six, both halves are quite good, but like by level eight, level nine, the bottom is so much better. All right, so yep, we'll do plus one here. This costs 50 gold, and then we'll do wound down here. Oops. And this costs 150 gold. 75 because we already have enhancement, 75 for the wound. So this costs us 200 gold total. So this leaves us at 14 gold, which is good because again, we don't really have anything to spend money on at this point. Although we are about to get to Prosperity 3, but again, we're going to be earning more money and we're not going to be able to do any more enhancements on the Mind Thief meaningfully for a while, so it doesn't hurt to do an expensive but very effective enhancement. Again, we use this bottom action every single rest cycle, so making this bottom action better is still a lot of value. Even if it's not the most cost-effective enhancement in the world, it's still a very powerful enhancement. Thank you, Red Nephilim, or Red Danish. All right, so that's done. So we've done all our enhancements, so now we can do our leveling up. So the Mind Thief doesn't level up, but both Craggy and Diviner do. So we'll do the Craggart level up first. So the Craggart gets to level six and has an impressively non-difficult decision. Yeah, yeah. so to summary for anyone who just arrived here, we did, or who just like kind of checking back in, we did Wound on the bottom of Furrow's Edge and plus one attack on the top of Frigid Apparition. This one just makes sense because it's just a high damage attack, making it a bit higher is better. Wound is the natural combination with stun, but we're going to have wound here and wound somewhere else. So this is what I'm talking about of like the diminishing returns. Also, wound is a little bit worse the higher the damage of the attack. So like an attack one stun is amazing, amazing, amazing with wound. But making an attack five or seven, which wounds, is like more medium because there's a lot likely to be a lot less health that the enemy has. I mean, it would be attack five stun. So wound is still also not bad on frigid apparition, but in general, I just kind of prefer the plus one there. And then, yeah, we did... Uh, Plus one push and wound on the top of healing swing, as well as plus one move on the bottom rumbling advance. And again, here we did an extra hex. All right. So, Crag Art. We have Cataclysm, which is an excellent card in both halves. It's a very powerful loss. Being in a large AoE attack six, also immobilized, which eh, rarely matters, but occasionally. Um, but more than anything, it's just a large AoE attack six. Ultimately, with such high difficulty enemies, we're not going to use losses like this too frequently, but it is still quite good. And then on the bottom, we've got a move three or move six if we consume earth. And again, we have more earth typically than we use. So this will frequently be a move six with 26 initiative. This card is excellent. Dig Pit is interesting because both of our allies do have invisibility. So this does allow us to potentially do a triple invis combo, which is quite powerful, being able to time walk entire monster turns. But the Diviner, like, I mean, yeah, all right. No, actually, I think Dimensional Rift can't even target herself, can it? I think it's only allies. Yep. So her only invis is actually an invis cloak, which means while we could have a very powerful series of two turns once in the scenario by using this bottom invis with, alongside her cloak and then the Mind Thief's cloak or the Mind Thief's, you know, um, 14 initiative level one card into the night or whatever it's called. Um, it's just not going to matter most of the scenario what this does. The stun trap is interesting because the Diviner's ability to reposition people pretty easily but again, it's still just like neither half here. Like this requires a, a little bit of work or a fair amount of work from our allies. And the effect is reasonable, but not great for level six card. This also is pretty narrow because it's only going to get used. I mean, it's only going to be effective, especially effective, a small amount per scenario. Whereas both halves here are just really good. Like again, move three, move six with 26 initiative is excellent. And this is one of the more powerful losses in the game. Um, so yeah, I mean, non-persistent losses in the game. Very easy Cataclysm. And then over to the Diviner. All right. So what do we have going on over here? Oh, let's do our perks. Sorry, let's not forget. So Craigert got two perks, actually. We didn't get any on Mind Thief, right? Yeah. Uh, so we get a plus two Muddle. And beyond that, yeah, it's a plus one Immobilize. Ugh. I mean, we have strength in a fair amount, and we have some deck stacking, but this perk is still just pretty bad. I think I'd rather just have a plus one immobilize than this. The immobilize can occasionally do something in our party. I don't want either of these rolling modifiers. They're just, I mean, I don't need earth, and wind is really useless. 
push is not very effective, and again, this all this hurts my advantage attacks, since I have a move to give myself advantage for two rounds, that matters a lot. Ignoring negative item effects just doesn't matter too much, I have no items that I really want to buy right now. I mean, I guess I should look at the Prosperity 3 items, but I'm pretty sure that I don't really care about this. So yeah, we'll do a plus two and then a plus one to mobilize. Plus one to mobilize isn't very good, but this is kind of a testament to how bad the Cracker Arts modifier deck is, that we're actually taking plus one to mobilize perks over other things. All right. It's still both improve our... I mean, the plus two model is nice. The plus one to mobilize still is, like technically improves our deck a little bit. All right. So as for over here, let's... I guess we can just do our perks first. Excuse me. Um, this is tough. When we attack, we just don't attack early enough for this to matter. So the real question is, do I take the plus three muddle and one of these, or do I just take both of these? I think the plus three muddle is probably better. The elements are kind of random. I think the dark is also better for me than the light thus far. So yeah, I think we'll just go like this and this. I don't think I have really a light spender anymore. So we'll replace a zero with a plus three muddle and a zero with a plus two dark. Again, plus three muddle just makes sense because it's a plus three, it's the highest damage possible here. And the plus two dark, because dark is better than the regenerate self, which is inconsistent. And plus one, shield one, again, our initiatives just aren't fast enough for that to consistently be useful. Consistently be useful. All right, so let's go ahead and grab, wait, oh, it's the plus three shield self. That's interesting as well, huh? Uh, but it replaces two plus ones. I mean, that's... I mean, replacing two plus ones with a plus three is good at some point, but that's not where we're at now. Definitely rather get rid of some of these zeros, which are making my draws so much worse. All right. So these two go in. And we take two zeros out. Which is a big help. So we're down to four zeros. Wait, what? Did we, did we forget to remove a zero at some point? I think we did. I've been playing with one too many zeros. All right, well, that explains a little bit why our deck's been so bad. Yeah, because we never add any zeros, and we should have three removed now, but we've only actually got two removed. I, mean, I guess I can just look through here and double check. Yep, I've not removed any zeros, but I was supposed to. All right. Well, our deck just got a lot better then. <laughs> All right, well, now we'll get to see if Call to the Nether ends up being more reasonable. Okay, so level six cards. Let's keep our level five card close. All right, uh, so shuffle three minus ones into a deck or six minus ones into a deck. Again, this just isn't realistic. If we've taken a look at our average turn length in scenarios while playing this party, we're typically somewhere around 23 turns. Um, if we play this early in a scenario, we don't make it to 23 turns and this doesn't remotely get close to gaining us enough additional tempo. Yeah, I, I like. I think Call of the Nether having the attack is much more interesting. This is a complaint that I had with the, another similar class in the game, you know, that you don't get to attack, to actually draw modifiers enough, you know? That the modifier deck is kind of a tease, and you get it occasionally, but not so often. Here, I'm definitely happy that Call of the Nether has plus zeros. Like I said, I mean, I think if you have like a 14 modifier deck, or I mean, 14 perk deck, or even like 10 plus, well, 10 plus, it's like, I think, pretty good. Once you're like towards the max, it's excellent, obviously. But I mean, we were playing more in the middle of like five to seven, perks and it's at that point call was a little bit worse i mean it was significantly worse i think also it's just again three player party versus four player party and how good envision is against high level enemies all right anyway there's no world in which we're ever playing this persistent loss the what we gain for it just isn't remotely possible and nine card class playing loss is just again not possible i mean here we had a lot of cards or well we theoretically could have had cards left at the end of the scenario but it was a 10 round scenario which is a lot different than again a tradition uh, like a a standard scenario which like i said is typically at this difficulty going to be something around i mean easily 20 plus rounds which a nine card class can't do if playing a loss early all right, on the bottom we have Muddle, target all enemies. When any ally enters a hex containing a rift token this round, they gain strength in. This also creates dark and gives one experience. Meh. Meh. That's kind of how I feel about that. Giving strength into my allies doesn't matter because I have the strength enhancements at this point. Otherwise, yeah, it certainly can be good. Obviously, there's a lot of positive interaction between strength in and, um, and messing with decks, but at this point it's so easy for both the Cragart and the Mind Thief to gain strength in at will because they can play a move two with good initiative that gives them strength in. So, not appealing. Muddling in all enemies also isn't. Also, by not ever taking this card, I'll never be tempted to try to use this Enhancement Hex, or Enhancement Dot. So this is a pretty easy throw this into the pile that we're not going to look at in the future. Welcome back, Nemrus. We're just leveling up. 
All right, the other level six card. Uh, reveal the top eight cards of any attack modifier deck, then put them back in any order. Additionally, reveal the top three cards of all other attack modifier decks and place them back in any order. Hmm. It's a lot of deck stacking, but most of the time, I don't know how useful that actually is. I mean, like, yeah, theoretically on the Mind Thief, I mean, I guess this is meant to be more useful with people who have larger decks. Mind Thief has, like, what, 12 cards in her deck? 14 at this point? Yeah, 14 cards. So that shows us most of the deck, especially because we've usually already drawn a few. And we're not going to want to wait eight draws before drawing our, I mean, like, before taking our crit, right? We're going to take plus twos and then the crit, so going eight deep isn't helping that much. Yeah, fair enough. Well, good luck. Uh, the positive of this, though, is 17 initiative move 3, and this has that same effect of turning um, positive modifiers into zeros. This is much more reasonable. This is 17 initiative move 3, which is something we're in the market for, and with an upside. This is kind of the same reason why we took the, um, the bottom of the Immobilized Rift thing, which is also just nice value. But once again, this does compare kind of unfavorably to the Immobilized Rift bottom when they do similar things. Uh... Now, this is a little bit more reasonable, but basically Teleport 4 versus Move 3. Since we don't have Boots of Striding, Teleport 4 is pretty much strictly better. We're rarely ever opening doors. 17 Initiative is significantly better than 23 Initiative. Shield 1 versus all positives become zeros. This is kind of a wash, to be honest. So at the end of the day, like this kind of just provides me sort of the same, a, a comparable bottom. Uh, what kind of abilities would you recommend putting a region enhancement on? Yeah. I mean, heal one all eyes. Wouldn't heal one all eyes just be strictly better with a bless? <laughs> but yeah, maybe something like that. If you do have something that targets all allies, I guess. I, I think that's a fair way of looking at regen. Like, the the bottom regen ability for the Diviner is actually not bad, this one. The fact that it does affect all allies ends up making it okay. Because again, regen is difficult to predict when it's going to be useful. Sometimes it's useful, sometimes not. You can try to play around it, and sometimes you will successfully play around it, and it'll be good, and sometimes you won't be able to successfully play around it even when you want to. Basically, the idea of doing it on a bunch of people is that you throw enough darts at the board that eventually one of them sticks. Uh, I mean, it, it just costs 20 too much gold. The, like, regen is comparable with plus one heal. Theoretically, on a multi-target enhancement, it is definitely better than plus one heal. But again, any sort of multi-target enhancement is tri traditionally just going to get blessed anyway, or potentially strengthened, depending on what it is. And yeah, that's 100 gold for a, an all ally thing for enhancement. I mean, typically you can do re better than that. Yeah. All right. Um, so anyway, basically the top I'm never going to play here. And this bottom is pretty comparable to the bottom of Dimensional Divide, which admittedly Dimensional Divide has a nice bottom. So that's not necessarily a strike against this. But essentially this is like, I'm kind of taking the same card again that I took here, only I'm only ever using one half of it, whereas here I can use both halves. So I'm not super sold on this, and at the end of the day, I think I just agree with Qualdrian's previous assessment, which is this. So again, we can just pretend that this doesn't have a, there's no half here either, but now we've got a move three, attack two, range three, curse. So like the truth is, if we compare these two bottoms. So basically, whichever card we take here, we're only ever playing the bottom. Now, there is something to be said for the 17 initiative, because our initiatives aren't great, and this would like make it easier for us to cut that 8, which we just bring for the initiative, but this is such a more powerful bottom. Like Again, now that our modifier deck is really getting up there, anytime we can make an attack is very good. We have a decent chance of getting two curses now, or just getting like a really reasonable amount of damage. Again, just the more attacks we get, the better, um, which makes this bottom like really good. And it's just like, this also does something different than this, whereas like, this is good when we need to attack, this is good defensively, rather than getting two that are good defensively. Also, the truth is, when we're playing on plus three difficulty, we just don't get attacked, like we can't allow ourselves to get attacked very much for something like this to actually be good enough. I mean, if we've watched most of these scenarios, again, at the end there, obviously we took a lot of attacks, but that's kind of unavoidable. All right, so anyway, we're gonna just take Seal their Fate. I think that's the correct choice here for us at level six. We'll just throw that over there. I'm looking forward to adding that into the deck, especially, like I said, as our modifier deck has improved. Okay, um, so anyway, that is it for today. We've done our two scenarios. We will be back again on Monday to try to round out or to finish up our campaign with Eclipse. Um, Tuesday, probably custom class testing. And Thursday, we'll be back with the Diviner campaign. Um, yeah, so that's about it. Did we check this off? No. Oh, there we go. <laughs> 
Sorry, Themris, but we have done two scenarios, and it is 9 o'clock, and I didn't take an eating break, so I'm quite hungry, and I'm also exhausted, because again, I'm going on like 4 to 5 hours of sleep per night. But the others are likely not taking a lot of hits. If you dedicate tank, definitely useful, but I assume the 100 gold could be better spent otherwise. I would agree. All right. Anyway, thank you very much to everyone who tuned in. It was a pleasure. I uh, hope you all have a great weekend. And like I said, I'll be back on Monday if you want to see any streaming, or I will be back again next Thursday for more of the Diviner campaign. Take care, everyone, and thank you once again.